Welcome to Both Down, episode 80, the number one Blood Bowl podcast. From Casa de Ginger. Casa de Ginger. I am Scott Prime, and with me as always is Steve Kilowoggy Campbell. How's it going? It's going great. How are you doing? Pretty well. Pretty well. Pretty well. That's it. Well, well, well. Well, well. Well, well, well. So, a um, lot of big news in the last week of Steve's life. Yeah, Scott kicked me out. I kicked Scott, <laughs> Steve out. You didn't kick yourself out. No, I didn't. Um, life is transitioning. And what that means for the podcast is, um, and you've kind of already alluded to this on, you know, giving a hint to everybody. Yeah. Um, Steve's moving out. I'm moving out. And nothing's going to change with the podcast. No, pretty much so, nothing. So um, we got, we'll get that out of the bag right now. It might even be better. <laughs> it's it's I'll possible. Have a, I'll have it set up. Oh, yeah. So Scott's girlfriend is moving in, Jen. Mm-hmm. So I'm moving out and I'm buying a house. And I'm rather scared. And she's rather scared. And I'm cool with it. Aside <laughs> from the whole buying a house thing. Well, we, we even talked last night. We were both like, <laughs> when I was making dinner last night for everybody, the whole family, I guess I said something about and this my would be house. You, her, and your I'll, two kids, and, her, and two kids. her two kids. I said something about my house. Right. And just because I'm so used to it being my house. And really, it is still your house. I know. Yeah. But there was just comments made where like, and I was like, man, I, I said, well, I've lived kind of alone in a sense. Yeah. With not, without a significant other right. for so long. And then she said, well, I've been alone a lot longer. We just, we had a big conversation about it. It's kind of interesting. So for you everyone... kind of get used to like, you're the sole decision maker. Oh, yeah. And you just go with it, right or wrong. And how old are your kids? My kids are eight and eleven. There's two girls, and she's got two boys that are eleven and thirteen. So yeah. So yeah. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be different, yeah. Yeah. And me, I'm moving super far away. Right. In fact, actually, if I look out the window, I can see the house I'm buying. Right. We're in the studio right now, recording. Which is and the if kitchen. You, <laughs> if you look right outside the <laughs> studio window. You can see Steve's house. I'm one street to the south and one house to the east. <laughs> Jennifer said she's going to buy a one of those like pool ladders that has the steps on I both sides. I thought about the same thing. And put it in the corner. Yeah. And I said, well, we'd have to clean out that corner where and it's the a tree. Giant, it's a giant tree there. Where the giant tree and all the black widows live. I don't know whose tree it is. I thought it was on, I thought it was on the property I was buying, but apparently it's on the neighbor to the left or the that, neighbor to the east. That tree? Yeah. That's on our property. Is it ours? That's mine. Oh. Unfortunately. I guess I never really looked. So when it, eventually it's going to fall on somebody's yeah. house, I'm going to get stuck paying for it. Oh. This shows how often I go in the backyard. <laughs> well, that back corner is like no man's land. That's right. where I let nature win. Mm-hmm. It's like I get 80% of the yard. You guys get 20. Yeah, we you, call it you even. leave me alone. You do your thing there. Ant kingdoms can be over there. Um, <laughs> there was a tarp over there that I finally cleaned up and threw away when i pulled it back this is totally off subject yes, uh when i pulled it back the um you know the dark mountain spiders went everywhere mm-hmm. if you want a blood bowl reference two black widows first there was one that was about a foot and a half away from my hand yeah and i smashed it immediately and then i flipped it over and there was another one and i was like wow this is great <laughs> wonderful ah, so, fun. but it was really weird like Funny how nature doesn't care if there's a big plastic tarp there. It's no. like, we're going to make an environment out of this. Mm-hmm. And I ruined their world. Sure did. And then I thought how cool it would be to do like a comic from a bug's point of view about how like it's Ragnarok. <laughs> their whole world's getting destroyed. And it's really just somebody lifting a tarp, you know? Yeah. So. We could do that. Yeah. Well, you kind of ruined the ending. Well, I didn't tell you the secret ending. Yeah. I'm not going to. Ooh. Anyways, let's focus back on Blood Bowl. Okay. Um, I don't really want to. Why? Because it's a hard freaking match. A match of what? Oh, between us. Our finals. So me and Steve met in the Stored League finals, and only one of us can smile because they won. Certainly isn't me. And one person is probably kicking himself because... All right, so we played a I game. I snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. So, literally, realistically, 
if you don't take we went into overtime so i'll give you that part yeah Should if you have. don't take overtime in there and you're watching the game there was a lot of actually good plays yeah. and it was a good game and i'm playing my chaos pact you're playing pro elves my pro elves right and you got rid of two of my people really damn fast. Right. We sat down. Steve goes, "How do you ever lose?" And then you got so many good skills and I plus do. agility and plus strength. I have like four really good players. And I've got like after that one. Lineman. Right. And my four strength sure hands guy was gone for the game, so that oh, kind of screwed thank me. God. That was huge. Yes. Um, but your little stupid Skaven guy made all the big plays he needed. Yes, he did. Picking up balls and two tackle zones and throwing, throwing bombs it. and. Mm-hmm. No, I had to pull off some BS, and I did. And I was leading 2-1, to one, and I thought the game was over. And Scott's like, no, I have a turn left. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. And so, then Steve rolls the third blitz he gets for the day. Second blitz. Might have been third. There was three. Okay. There was four total. Okay. But, yeah, it was <laughs> horrible. Because yeah, I blitzed. I tried to hit him, and I got like a... I got a couple people down. I tried to tie up his people so that if he tried to pass or hand off, then it would be harder. Not even thinking about the one-turn touchdown. I was just thinking about, you know, just in case. No, I get it. You're just and I mar- set it up it harder. perfectly for him to get a one-turn touchdown. I had seven people left on my team. Steve had his whole team. Yeah, um, I wasn't able to hurt you nearly as much as I should have. I don't know if I was going to be smart enough to do it, but I knew that I only had my only chance was one push because I have a guy who has nine movement and then he has sprint skill yeah. and sure feet. And I was like, I can just get a chance. I should have just ran the hell away, but I went behind the scenes and <laughs> set up diagonally and Jesus. So I, I was able to plug one hole instead of two, which would have been a lot harder. Yeah. Like math wise, I still had the numbers to do it. it I would have just had to roll. A crap ton of rolls. Right. A lot Instead more than you allowed one. me. Right. So the only thing I had to do without re-rolls is pick up the ball, throw the ball, catch the ball, and then plug one guy in and do one blitz to get a push. And yeah. that's what I needed. And then I had to... Go for it three times, which you failed one. Right. My sure hand feet came in, and I tied it on the last play of the game. And I was really happy at that point, even though I still thought I was going to lose, because number-wise, yeah. and then... And I was like, okay, fine. Well, we roll for the next half, and I have two re-rolls. You have none. Right. Because Ligadoo doesn't carry over. Well, it carries over, but you don't get a new one. Right. And I chose to receive. I'm like, all I've got to do is pick up the ball, walk down the field. I couldn't do anything. Like, my dice abandoned me completely in overtime. For sure. I went to pick up the ball. I got a one. I went. For I sure. re-rolled, got a one. I had another chance. I got a one. It bounced. It bounced. It went to you. Just like. Well, I think. Is that I when I got. Anything. I got my blitz or was it when I went it was up after three to that. two? Then I got a blitz. We, in our overtime, we play a full half instead of sudden death. Right. Which, in retrospect, maybe we should just do th- sudden <laughs> death. But we just like to give people the chance. And it. He ended up winning five to two. Well, one of them you just abandoned the ball completely. I, I sure did the last one. And I don't blame you because at that point, at that point, it didn't fucking matter. So, I just wanted to kill people, right. and I couldn't even do that. Um, so yes, my Youthland United Unicorns are wizard. What is our league called? The Cobble yeah. Cobble Champions. So now it's pretty funny. And honestly, Scott if, Hess, if you had been on the podcast, yeah. won the first league. Second league was won by um, Michael Grubb. Yeah. Not on the podcast ever. And then you won it, and then mm-hmm. I've won it. So kind of, we've kind of both downs dominated the league. Kind of just because, you know, we played a lot more than most of those well, people. Well, that's true, too. So, But, like, if you had beaten me in regulation, I wouldn't have had an issue with it. I didn't care because I fully expected to lose, and I didn't mind you winning because I don't need to win back-to-back. The way it happened, I was so The way pissed. it was happening was crazy. I mean, <laughs> even Brian, the store owner, goes, so who ended up winning? And I said, I won 5-2 to two in overtime. He's like, 5-2 to two in overtime? How does that happen? Yeah. <laughs> and Steve had some choice words, and we went on. It pretty much. Uh, you, my fault. I mean, it happens. You killed one of my amazing blitzers, but not the amazing blitzer. No, <laughs> uh, not at blitzer, all. So I was... Um, I even fouled that guy and didn't 
<sighs> I had advantage what three dice or mm-hmm. three pluses. Mm-hmm. Couldn't break a seven. Yeah, but you did beat the hell out of me a lot. Yeah, sort of. Well, near the end of the game, I had five guys left. True. So, but it didn't matter. <laughs> no, I was happy. It's elves. As long as you have three people, you're fine. I finally got the curse of Steve off my back. I think that's the first time I beat him in like three years. I think so. Back to the last championship game, then. It's been a while, long time since I beat you. Okay. If you maybe, say so. Maybe that first league that we last, had at the store. Yeah, I, I challenged you, so you with the <laughs> your Camry. I yeah. just destroyed them. That's what but, I'm saying. It's okay. been a while since I beat you. I guess that's true. Um, but there you go. Store league four seasons in. Uh, we're gonna take a couple weeks break and regroup, and we're trying to decide. Boy, this is a long opening segment. But we're fine. just trying to decide what to do with the league. I mean, we're both torn on like Steve wants to go simple. Yeah, instead of doing I really the buyback stuff. Want to get rid of all the buyback crap and just. I like the buyback, but I also like it when I don't have to do all the math for it. Yeah, so. that's the thing. I mean, we have a guy Anthony doing it all, and if he's not doing it, I don't want to. Sure, I get that. Anyways. It's interesting. If yeah. you're out there and you have a league and you do the buyback system and you've played more than four leagues or something and you have an opinion, try to sway us one way or another. Talk to Drew, and he's also of the opinion it doesn't really hurt the good teams enough. That the new system doesn't yeah. hurt them enough? Yeah. Because if you're good, you get more touchdowns, you get more casualties, you get the winnings for the league or whatever. The buyback doesn't hurt you. I think the only what time hurts it, you is when you're you play four games and you don't get casualties or touchdowns and you get screwed. I think the real, just me Although guessing. What, even though I don't know that I can't prove this, I think the randomness of this guy wants to retire because mm-hmm. of aches and pains or whatever is the big kicker. Because we had a guy named Dustin who played two yeah. seasons. He had like three orcs that wanted to retire. Yeah, and they and weren't great. They weren't great, but they had. But they he either pays the them skills. a lot more, yeah. or he lets them retire and becomes, you know, less, lesser team. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. Okay. Besides well, all that, did we get everything out of the way? Let's see. We we did that. I think so. Um, next month we are planning on going to Three Die Brawl. Yep. Uh, me, Steve, and Jennifer on a quest, and um, that's it. So now we can just. Talk about our segments. What have we got then? Oh, you don't have notes? No, segment one, we're going to talk about Chimera Cup. <laughs> Am I the only guy that takes notes in this podcast? Pretty much. Organized? There's a whole sheet of paper there with shout outs. So. <laughs> All right, so in uh, section one, we're going to recap and talk about the weekend of Chimera Cup, which was a um, team tournament, and we'll give you all the details next segment. Then we're going to talk about the Spike Magazine in the second segment, and whole we've, segment devoted to it. Yep. And then uh, we're going to, in the third segment, we're going to talk about new released product and new releases coming up. And then, of course, we'll have some shout outs near the end for all you wonderful people. Sounds good. All right. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with some Chimera Cup. Sounds brought to you by Wizards Asylum in Norman, Oklahoma. Check out their new location at 3717 West Main or online at wizardsnorman.com. Segment one, Chimera Cup. Chimera Cup. <laughs> it's not bad. <laughs> so, yeah, last, was it last weekend? Yes. It was last weekend. La- Time's been flying. I mean, <laughs> Monday, found out Scott's girlfriend's moving in. Weekend, Chimera Cup. This whole week's been, you know, looking at house, buying house, putting money down, all that. So I have no idea what time it is. I totally understand. So, yes, last weekend, we went to Missouri. We went to Missouri. It was, uh, what was the weekend of that? The... Let's see, I guess a week ago, the 12th, <laughs> yes. the 12th of May, uh, Chimera Cup was a team tournament. Mm-hmm. You needed three people on your team. We had three divisions, the Lion Division, which was we took some stats from the NAF that had like three tiers, basically. Well, there's 24 teams. And they ranked the teams right. winning percentage-wise. That's 
I don't know how long of a case study or whatever it was, but like it was stats that basically showed these are the top tier teams, the low tier teams. And mid tier. Yep. So we took the top eight. That was the line division, the middle eight. Uh, that was the goat division. And then the bottom eight, which was snake division. So we had stats for, or trophies, awards for the top three teams. And then the champion of each one of those divisions. Yep. And then, of course, we did overall stuff of like defense, offense, defense, offense, casualties. Stuff like that. Yeah. Um, where do we start? Me and let's well, see. I had to work a painful double. Yeah, the with, night before. So with Scott's exhausted. schedule, he either works seven a.m. to three thirty, or three thirty to midnight, or seven a.m. to three thirty, then three thirty to midnight. All right. <laughs> so he he pulled a double that night. And that's kind of why this is a little late, too, because he worked evenings all last week yep. or this week, whatever. Yep. Low man on the totem pole get stuck with lots of nights. So, yeah, you worked a double. So that Friday, I had off from work, and we headed up to Missouri. Yeah, we made good time, though. <laughs> yeah. It was, what, supposed to be a five-hour trip? Four we and made, a half, five hours, something like that. We made it about Three and a half or four. <laughs> something like that. Steve might have sped. Uh, Steve didn't drive, so Steve oh. didn't. Well, I wasn't planning on really driving much because I figured I'd be tired. But yeah, the um, I figured I'd be driving. Every time I think about like I can let Steve drive, but we're gonna drive ten miles under the speed limit. It's not ten miles under the (laughs) speed limit. It's ten miles under what you would drive, which is the speed. limit. It is five miles over the speed limit. That is typically (laughs) what I say. So we got to Springfield early, which we were fine with. Uh, We were waiting. uh, We were staying with Chance and Drew from Three Dot Block and Tim Lyons, their sidekick. Yeah, we were gonna get separate hotel rooms, but. I got to looking and I found a place that was, I guess, the place that Drew was staying at. We got a room at. They had suites that had two rooms and a living area. So we had two rooms and a pull-out couch. It was like we had an apartment for it a was, weekend. It was really like that. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. Had a little kitchen and everything. Um, so if you have a group of people that want to do it next year, we highly recommend that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was like 80 bucks a person for the yeah. weekend, which is not terrible. 40 bucks a night, no. Um, so... Yeah, since we got there so early, we decided to take in some local cuisine, uh, Chick Fil A. <laughs> I wouldn't even have to talk about that. It was yeah. disappointing. It was, it was pretty bad Chick Fil A too. Yeah, it wasn't. It was just fine. Um, we were right by the giant freaking Bass Pro Shop. Mm-hmm. We didn't think it was that big until we turned a corner and it kept going. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, it was. It was massive. It was like Thanos' ship. Mm-hmm. Um, then we decided, like, I was still looking for some old Marvel 25th anniversary covers. Which is the, the portrait finally, with all the figures around it. Right. You know. And um, so we we just started hitting all. We thought we were going to go one or two. But we ended up going to every comic book store in and, town except for one. Did and we miss one? We missed one, but we're not sure if that was really a comic store or more game store that had new comics. Right. So, but we hit every place and every place, one of us, if not both of us, found something to buy. Sure. Um, I even found an old Care Bears cover with the Marvel 25th anniversary that it was uh, a little beat up, but it was worth more than $2 that the guy charged me for. Yeah. And um, then he saw the nick of it and he's like, oh, I'll knock a little bit off of that. So, mm-hmm. but we had fun. Um, we ended up finding your those, cover that you needed. Yeah, we found, w- which was... The last Incredible Hulk in 325. In- Incredible Hulk, right? Which was the last one I need until my hot comics shipped me the wrong order. So technically, I'm not done with that collection yet. Right. So by the next podcast, hopefully I can say that and I'll brag for no reason. But yeah, we found the, co- the covers I needed. Um, the highlight of what we found was, was Scott... Was looking through some boxes and found a box of sketch covers. Yes. And I found this. two Blood Bowl sketch cover comics. Which are fairly hard to find, at least around here. Yeah. So. It might not be worth much, but I mean, we got them for cover price. Yeah, we got them for cover. Um, that was pretty cool. But yeah, like, Springfield had a lot of what I call old school comic shops from, yeah. like, the early 90s late 80s where all they sell is comics and mm-hmm. they're, it has that old comic smell to it and yeah the last place we went to cosmic cave or something mm-hmm. cosmic king i think either way if you're in springfield it's something cosmic 
And it was definitely old school comic feel. Was that the one that was like really weird shaped inside? Yeah. Yeah, that was. The one you found your Hulk at? Yeah. But I, I'm like already kind of like, I can't wait for next year so we can go back and, mm-hmm. you know, go to some of these comic shops again. So, um, so we shopped around and we met up with the boys. Um, Drew needed some things for the tournament. So they all went shopping. I went and worked out. Yeah. Man, running on the treadmill. It's so much easier than running on concrete. Oh, that's for damn sure. It's more boring, or it's is that the proper? I guess it's English. Boring. Yeah, more boring. More boring, but man, to I think it's I not really because well. I can just veg out and listen to music or listen to a podcast, well, as I, opposed to in the wild, I have to pay attention to what you know what is around oh, me. Oh, well, that's true. Yeah, I mean, essentially, you can close your eyes and run or yeah. walk or so. Uh, then we all got together. We went. To dinner? Yeah. We went to, what was that place called? Haley's? Haley's Diner? Gailey's. Gailey's Diner. Yes. Downtown uh, Springfield. Somewhere a chance took us when he goes to spring, summer camps. Yeah. Um, it was a breakfast diner place. It's fine. I thought it was pretty good. At least Friday night, it was really good. Yeah, we went the, the second time when we left. And it was better that day, but I think it's just because I remember there was butter on the table. <laughs> I forgot to put butter on my French toast the first time. Right. I had so, a, yeah. I had an eggs Benedict with, that was to die for. It was okay. so good. Good. And instead of like hash browns or like what is it, fried potatoes, mm-hmm. they had sweet potato hash browns, which are amazing. Yeah, I didn't much care for that. You didn't? It's very sweet. I don't <sighs> know. I'm not a big fan of sweet potatoes. I know. I don't I find that weird that anybody does not like sweet potatoes. Just how it works. I know, it's just odd. But we um, also went to 1984 that night. Oh, that's okay. I knew we did yeah, something arcade. else. We went to that actually before we ate. Yeah. And, and a little after. <laughs> and that's, you can tell them what it is, Steve. It's an arcade. Old school, basically themed like 1984. So you walk in, you pay seven fifty, and you all their video games are on free play. And they have a lot of pinball machines that you have to pay for. But it's still only 50 cents or so. So I'm torn about that place. Like, going to it, I was so excited. I get there, I'm excited. I go up to a game, I press player one, I'm thinking I'm an adult now, uh, this game's at least I can be better at than when I was a child, much. feeding it quarters. No, it's pretty awful. No, they're made to take your quarters. They are, they're awful. And for the most part, I don't care to just sit there and play a video game, you know, I, I've had all those games in my life, you know, Commodore 64 or the sure. Atari or whatever. And it's kind of neat to play the old machines, but video games just don't appeal to me as much. Let's put it this way. I couldn't have walked in there at 11 o'clock at night or day yeah. and played all day till 8 o'clock. Oh, no. We, we played for 30, 45 minutes. That's about enough for me. And that was enough. I played a lot of pinball. Right. The pinballs they did charge you mm-hmm. for. If the pinballs were free play... And obviously, I, I understand why they do it. Yeah. Um, a lot more maintenance. <laughs> right. Well, they also had newer pinballs. Yes. Versus. They had some. Mm-hmm. You know, like old school ones. Um, but we left, and then we came back and played a little bit more, and then we left. Yeah. But, man, track and field, I think I'm worse now than I was when I was a kid. <laughs> if, you've, if you're too young to know what track and field is, it's a game where it has two buttons. No, three buttons. It's a left foot, right foot button. And then a jump button. Mm-hmm. And to run, you have to sync up your right foot and left foot button, and you got to hit them like 100 miles an hour. Right. I had more fun watching, you probably didn't know, there was some co-eds there, some girls playing, like probably co- college girls. Mm-hmm. And there was like a group of four of them, and they were just buddies hanging out, and they were all playing track and field. I had more fun watching them because they got really far you know, yeah. through the game. But so Chance did really good, too. Me and him played, and he got to the end of it. So. Hmm. But Paperboy is harder than crap. Paper, pa- Paperboy is like the hardest game in the world. Uh, I used to put money in that game. I don't know why. Yeah, I because it, you just wanted to get, like, it's like, this can't be that hard. No. N- now I know why my parents were mad at me for wasting quarters. Yeah. I mean, it was awful. Yeah. Those games. I liked Kick. Kick? The one with the clown. You got to get under the ball, the balloons. I've never seen that until this this weekend. It's yeah. a pervy game with this creepy clown on a it's unicycle. Not pervy. There's nothing pervy at all about and he it. He kicks balloons around until they pop on his head. You're supposed to pop them. You're not supposed to kick them. If you kick them, that means that it's past you. 
okay. just trying to stay alive. Well, I didn't understand it. I got the high score in Cubert, but I assume that they probably turn those games off once a week so everybody can get the high score. Pretty much. But I took a picture and bragged about it. Those those machines are all, and if purpose- you can memorize them, you're good. If you can't <laughs> memorize, you're, you're dead. I purposely waited till we left. Because I didn't want you or Drew to see that I got the high score in Cubert and walk over there and beat my score. Yeah, we wouldn't do that. Yeah, you would have. No. You're ginger. I, I would have done it to you. Yeah, because you're a dick. Oh. Maybe so. I mean, All right. So we did 1984. We did Gailey's. And then we went back to the hotel and gabbed too long and yeah. went to bed. Then we got I believe up. that's it. Yeah. Then we got up early, had breakfast at the hotel, and yeah. went over to Metagames. Metagames? Uh... Carl Morgan, I believe, was the guy who's running it, and okay. he was there to open up early for us. We got all set up. Drew took the lead on inputting everything since he Is had Is this the a, Carl Morgan that follows us on Facebook? Probably, yeah. Is it like carl No, that's a... Different person? Yeah, that's... Okay, sorry. That's you're in Blood Bowl guy. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. But yeah, so we got started. Like I said, Drew had everything set up, and we just... It was odd. It Drew was, was running everything through Excel. Yeah. Which I'm I'm okay at Excel. I'm not Drew level. No, Drew's damn good with it. Like, you're higher than me, and then like Drew's like way higher oh, than yeah. anybody else. Yeah, we didn't start doing stuff like that. I'm like, I have no clue. Right. So I felt weird because I was helping the tournament, yet I couldn't really help mm-hmm. input stats and stuff like that. So what was interesting uh, one, Metagames is a really nice store. And the more I hang out in there, the more and more I like it. It's very well laid out, very spacious. It has a lot of room for games. It's <laughs> professional? Yes, very much so. It's very clean and professional up, up front. And yeah. then you have your game room to you know lounge around and do whatever. It's mm-hmm. just it's classy. Yeah. If, that's a, if you can make a game. It's understandable. Circle. Like I really... I enjoy it more and more every time I'm like hanging out there. Yeah. And the more I think about it, it's like there's things I would like to steal and try to get Brian from Wizards to do more. For often. sure. But um, there was how many of us? We N- had 16 total. No, we, we had 18. Six teams of three. So, yes, we had 18 total. <laughs> okay. yeah, whatever. We had six teams. Yeah. 18 people. Um, all of us got to play because we needed to fill in teams. There was... Eight of us, if I remember correctly, that needed teams. Is that right? We had because Drew and or I mean Dean and his buddy were going to play on the same team. Yeah, so they needed. So we one had to spot. fill in one, and then we had to fill in two teams. So seven. okay, so there was seven. Yeah. Um. So we did it the only way proper. You know, we just <laughs> Steve threw in some dice in a random bag, and we all drew for teams. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Luckily, uh, we have different colored dice for each tier. So if you're the goat, you got. If you were the lion, you got blue. Goat got red, and snake got green. Green. And so, just put them in the bag, and you pull them, and you get your teams. Yeah, because all of us brought one of each of the teams. So yeah, we got to fill it in, and then. Um, Thank God. <laughs> and then, uh, see, I wound, wound up with a team with Tim Lyons and Chance, and then you were with Brendan. Mm-hmm. And, and another gentleman from Springfield that it, his name escapes me right now. I think it was Dick. Is it David? David Dickerson. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought you were just making up something. No. No, hey. it had Dick in there somewhere. Okay. Just like your mom. Oh. Snap. Anyways, this is just my opinion. Next time we need to make squads more important. And if we have more time and everything. When you just throw people together, it doesn't have that squad feel, you know? Oh, I could see that. Like, if I got two random guys I've never met before. Yeah. Like, totally never met before. I mean, we know. And they're both we, nice we guys. Brandon, yeah. But, I mean, I felt more competitive, which is probably a bad thing, because I had Chance and Tim on my team, and I didn't want to let them down. Exactly. So. Yeah, and mine, it was just kind of, I think it hurts, too, when we're, we have individual match sheets, and we're turning them in, so we don't know how each other are doing unless we really sit around and talk. Which, gotcha. You know, there's not. We didn't have a whole lot of time at the beginning to do, and then in between round one and two, we kind of just sped things together to make up a little bit of time. Right. We had a gentleman who had to leave at a certain time, I think, for work or something. Yeah. So, um, 
We had to make sure to get three rounds So we wanted to at least make sure his team got at least three full rounds in. So we had a very abbreviated lunch, Mm -hmm. um, which kind of got us back on time. We were about 30 minutes late to begin with. Went to that barbecue place. It was about two two, uh, stores down or whatever. Uh It was really good and super cheap. I got a two meat plate, eight bucks. That's good. It was insane. I had crappy Wendy's for lunch. Yeah, don't do that. (laughs) Here's a trip. Tip. Here's a tip on trip. Here's a tri- here's a tip on trips. There we go. Uh huh. Here's a tip on trips. Don't eat at a chain restaurant. Oh, Always I agree. Always go to. I'm just saying for other people. I I totally agree. Um, I went to the sub place because I thought Chance was with me. Yeah. So I thought he could get something vegetarian. Right. Versus going to the barbecue place where. Yeah, he would have no options. I mean, meat <laughs> meats on the menu only, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And um, it was so packed, we just needed something really quick. So sure. We walked over the no, I get that. But, um, so did you want to talk about your matchups for the day? No, or? not at all. Steve took chaos. Steve had a crappy build for whatever. <laughs> he had 13 I, players. I did it at the last <clears throat> moment, and I, w- I had to just been going by looking at my models, and I put in all my Beastmen and the Chaos Warriors. Yeah, and the Minotaur, and I ended up with 13 people. <laughs> And only one reroll. One reroll. So would that extra reroll helped? Yes, uh, a reroll would have helped probably. The extra people didn't. I figured since I'd screwed up and done the roster, I might as well try to foul people. <laughs> that didn't help any. No, it's supposed to work all the time. People tell me all know. the time you just foul. So you just foul, you never get caught. Yeah, I I went against two slon teams and I could not hurt them <laughs> to save my life. And then. I forget even what the third round was. Fourth round, the w- with our teams going four rounds and not having as many teams as needed for four rounds. Right, because essentially we paired up by teams. So it had been just like having squads, a four-round yeah. tournament or squads. Yeah. A four-round tournament with six people. Right. So and that meant we had people who had to play each other. Well, my team and the team I played in my squad and the t- squad I played in round three had to play each other again for round four. So we ended up switching around what tiers we played because throughout the whole tournament. Because the agreement was is y'all weren't in any of the finals anyways. Right. So. One guy was in contention for most casualties, but he can go against anybody. Right. We'll possibly get that. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, the way it was is in each squad, Lion had to play Lion, Goat had to play Goat, Snake had to play Snake. Here, we just switched it around, again, using dice, and I ended up going against the Lion team, which was top tier, and I was bottom tier. That game, I ended up winning. <laughs> so, I was one in three. Yeah, so probably what we learned here is next year, we need to put in the rule pack, if we have eight teams... We're playing four rounds. If we have less than eight teams, we play, we play three. three rounds. And I had mentioned that before in the in the rules when we didn't know how many people we'd be getting, mm-hmm. but I didn't I didn't go to eight. I just said I think if we have less than six, we'd go three. Gotcha. We didn't take that into consideration. But yes. oh well, live and learn. Exactly, it worked out fine. How'd you end up doing? Um, round one, I played Colton, which is a younger guy. I'd say. 14, 15? If you want to say that. Um, I have no clue. He couldn't drive because he got dropped off. Right. And um, I got my face smashed in. Like, another <laughs> game. Couldn't make it to turn two with all 11 people. And, yeah. I mean, the dice just crapped the bed. There was nothing I could nothing I could do about it. I was laughing. Finally, I was laughing. I was really upset. And at one point, I mean, I was getting close to getting pitch cleared. Yeah. And he just whooped my butt to nothing. I mean, I had one chance where, like, he decided to throw a long pass, which I was like, why? But I didn't want to say anything. Mm -hmm. So he threw it over my head. I missed the. Of course, I rolled a one for the intercept chance. And he rolls his six, and he rolls a five. (laughs) And there's always a chance. Yeah. You know, so, like, he shouldn't have thrown it. But he did, and it just there was nothing I could do right. I mean, all my built-in rerolls of dodge went one ones. I right, mean, it's just it's just one of those games. I told Chance and, and what, Tim, I'm what did sorry. you take? I took Dark Elves. Um, I was playing against Norse, and I got whooped. 
Yeah. Two nothing. Went to the next round. Played Michael Haley finally. I've seen him at plenty of tournaments. Never got to play him. So I was excited about that. Um, I think uh, he I played him in the third round. He beat me. No, you played him in the fourth round. I played him fourth round. I beat him. All right. He played had a bad Rich tournament Bonifante. too. Rich, I played third round. Um, played Michael Haley round two. And it was, uh, I won two to nothing. His dice crapped the bed really, really bad. Our builds were playing the same race. I thought we'd have the same builds. His build was actually better than mine. Like, I looked at his build and went, oh, I didn't realize you could do that. Yeah. Why didn't I think of that? Because hmm. um, he got two witch elves with the money and only got one. He utilized leader to get the reroll yeah. versus not. Yeah, so I don't I, know if two witch elves is better sometimes. Just the, the option to have that seven armor sucks, yeah. but the double frenzy is pretty awesome. That is. Um, I lucked out by hurting them really early because he had a leap one. But two nothing. Uh, round three came back from lunch, and I had to play Drew, who's known for every time he plays Norse against me, he destroys my team. Like at Oklahoma Bowl, he pitch cleared me. It was turn two, and I'm looking over, and you had three guys out already. Yep. That, That's exactly how the day went. I, I don't get. I mean, we make mention of it. We've made mention of it for years. So up to this somehow point, your luck is you will lose people so fast. So now we're in game three, and I haven't made it to turn two with eleven players in the field. It's crazy. Couldn't do it. Um, Drew destroyed me. Yeah, destroyed me. But I managed to somehow. I can't remember now. Score. I think I, I got forced to like throw a long pass or something. Right. Which is not as hard with elves. So I threw a pass. I was up one nothing. We go into halftime. I'm like, well, I've held on this long. It'll probably be a two to one win because he's going to push down the score. Mm -hmm. I think there was a picture on Facebook. I think I set up with five or six players. It wasn't many. Um, but I, I had the positionals left that had skills. So I, I leaped in his cage a few, not leaped, dodged into his cage a few times. And I kept popping the ball out Jeez. to a point Stupid where elves. I really questioned Drew. Like, I was like, is he slow rolling me now? Mm -hmm. Or because I only had like five players left on the field. And I kept jumping in there and jumping in there and or dodging in there and knocking the ball out. And then it, I think I would have made the mistake of pushing, but Drew's played way more than us, even though we think we play all the time. He, he has those leagues going all the time. He's like, I'm not giving you a chance with two turns left to score, with, even with five L's. Just taking the tie? He was said, I'm taking the tie, because all it is is one bad roll for me, and then yeah. you score, and I get beat two to one. I probably would have pushed it. Yeah, for whatever reason, we don't have that mentality. We have the mentality of if there's a chance we can win, we're going to try. Um, it's probably so, why we lose a lot. So on turn seven, I popped into his cage again and knocked the ball out. So it came down to turn eight on Drew's turn to mm -hmm. pick up the ball. He had re-rolls, and I just needed him to fumble that roll twice so I could win one to nothing. But he got it. I was very proud of the tie because I didn't tilt off. I was pretty mad, but I didn't yeah. tilt off too much. And hung on for the tie. So it felt like a win, kind of. But so good. I tied Drew, and he's really good with Norse. Um, and then round four, I played William Toops, another tough opponent. And I let my anger get to me admittedly in this game. Um, I was really pissed off at myself for, you know, when it happened, I wanted to blame him for not marking his guys well. But the truth be told, he marked him fine. He had little magnets so he could, like, stack skills. Did you see that? I've seen it before. So he had metal on the bottom of his bases, and they had these washers that mm -hmm. were painted different colors. So he could just stack them. Now, you can't see them as clear as like a rubber band around the model because you're going to have to pay attention to the base. Right. And I was furious at myself for, one, I set a guy in position, and I didn't think anything of his frenzy. I didn't even realize that guy had frenzy. And then the next turn, he frenzied me out, which mm -hmm. totally... Messed up everything. So I was so mad at myself because I knew the game was going to be tight. And we were going into round four. And I thought maybe we had a chance to get a trophy. And then at one point, I called a pass. 
And in the middle of my pass run, I decided not to pass it and just go ahead and dodge through. And mm-hmm. I rolled one, re roll one. Yeah. And um, anyways, I scored first half, second half. I was told many times how, I don't know why you're so upset. You're going to win two to nothing. And then I had him once again. I rolled one, re roll one. And he was very happy about that. And that set me off. And anyways, long story short, I tied a good coach one to one. Uh, we went on. T- well, we can tell about the awards in a second. So might as well. Know. I was giving myself a lot of pressure though because I didn't want to let the team down. Right. So it was it was weird. I don't know if I liked that feeling or not, but like I was really mad at myself. Yeah, for Amor- a couple mistakes. A Oracle Cup was like that too. It was, and it was a little different because I think there, if the squad won. Like, if you had more points than the other team, you won. So, you, I, I don't know. But, yeah, the whole idea of being part of a team versus individual is very different. Right. Uh, I knew Tim Lyons was doing really well. So Yeah. Anyways, I put a lot of pressure on myself, and uh, it really sucked. I but, can imagine. But, really, I mean, Williams come down here and done really well at Oklahoma Bowl and Spikey and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I tied two really good coaches. Yeah. Um, so... I'm fine with that. First game, I'm more mad. I mean, just got diced. So, all right. So, let's get to the awards. Are we ready for that? Oh, yeah. All right. So, I'm going to go. I got the little thing here. So, let's do the champions for each division. So, Lion champion was William Toops. Yeah. I think he went three wins, one tie for the day. Makes sense. Uh, Goat champ was Tim Lyons. He went 4-0 for the day. Uh, Snake champ was Dean Piper. I think he had three wins and a tie. Did he tie I, somebody? He beat the pants off of me. I know he beat... I don't know his record, to be quite honest with you. I thought he hiccuped somewhere along the line with either a loss or a tie. He might have tied. I don't know. So, um, best, e- uh, best offense went to Ryan Smith, a Springfield local. Best defense went to the youngster Colton I played, and I'm sorry I do not have his last name, but he's a youngster. He doesn't listen to podcasts. I would hope not. (laughs) I would hope not. Uh, Most brutal went to Brendan Smith, another Springfield local. Man, there's a lot of Smiths that play Blood Bowl there. Yeah. Are they all brothers? At least two. No. The cousins? Don't think so. They all related? Aren't we all? Oh, okay. Uh, Fan favorite went from Austin's Dave... Hanreth. Um, yeah, we had we had a good showing of out-of-state people. Yeah, I was going to get to that here in a second. Okay, go ahead. Uh, best sport went to Rich Bonifante, all the way from Colorado. Right. Now you can say your thing. We sure had a lot of out-of-state people there. <laughs> well, at the t- What thing? We had two people. No, three people come up from Austin. Yeah. 12-hour drive. We had two people come up from Colorado, a 12-hour drive. Yeah, that's crazy. That is nuts. For our little tournament, which... And every one of them said it was worth it. I'm glad. Everyone I talked to said it was worth it. Michael Haley and Rich Bonifanti said it was amazing. They had a great time. I'm good. I mean, it helps that, like, we got hooked up with prizes. Yeah. Definitely support (laughs) metagames because we uh, had a budget. We bought stuff from them. Part of the thing of running it there was we're supposed to buy stuff from them to give away. Like, right. And they yeah, stock global no stuff a lot. Yeah. And then they go, how about we throw in all this? And, and we're this like, and that. And like, okay. And I saw the look and fear in Steve's eye of like, we have X amount to spend. And if this goes over, what do yeah. we do? I brought and up. it came up just right on the nose. So yeah, I'm well, pretty sure he donated. He basically just take the, took the money and was like, here, just take all this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So it was it was nuts. But yeah. So like out of the eighteen people, I think seven uh, no, ten people got prizes, like from the drawing. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good. And Definitely. it was like the Doom Lords and significant stuff. Yeah, we had a couple of Doom Lords, a couple of magazines, some five sets of dice or whatever. Yeah, it was good. Good swag. Um so prizes. Third place went to the team known as the Primates. Uh, that was me, Chance, and Tim Lyons. Nice job. Yeah, thank you. Third place. Yay. That means kind of we won it all. It doesn't say third. It just says Delzine. The Delzine, yes. Yeah. Um, the In Boss Award, which is second, 
went to the team of Dean Piper, Dave Hanrath, and Drew Bucciconi. Right. And they only beat us out by one point. That's not much. <laughs> no. Then, the first place, Springfield's very own, the Grindhouse, which was a team made up of Joe Smith, Ryan Smith, and William Toops. So Springfield gets to keep their own little trophy in their backyard. Each individual champion was part of one of the top three teams. Each, each separately. Each individual. The champion. GOAT champion, the oh, Lion champion, the they, Snake champion. You're saying like they pretty much kind of carried their team? Or? Well, I'm just saying, well, no, I'm just saying that it was interesting that the champion of each one was in one of the top three teams. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. Pretty neat. Uh, so I believe that was all the awards. I didn't miss anything here. No? I think that was it. But um, we wrapped up um, about 1030. No, I'm joking. <laughs> we wrapped up about 730. So right. we, we were behind and we still ran the tournament, did awards, and got everybody out at, by 730. And then we went to dinner. Yes. Which I can't remember what that place was called. Pizza House? Pizza House, yes. Such a generic name. He sure is. So Chance took us to a place called Pizza House that was on the other side of town. And it was paper thin pizza. It wasn't bad. No. It wasn't great. It was pizza. It was really good when we started eating it. Well, I think we were just really hungry at that point. I know that's what I'm saying. Like it <laughs> but, was really good. Yeah, I mean overall, I mean it was pretty good. It's nothing to write home about. I'd have it again. Yeah, it was paper thin. It's just it's did he call it Detroit style? Or no, it's, super it, thin? it's St. Louis style. Okay. Yeah, so. Detroit is square and thick crust. It's like Little Caesars. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so it's St. Louis style. This was round, cut into squares, mm -hmm. and really thin. It was, I was pretty happy. Yeah, I, mean, I was happy. I mean, it's food. Yeah. Um, then we went back to the hotel, played a little... Dastardly dirigibles. Played some dastardly dribble. I can't say the word. Dirigibles. Dirigibles. And you and Drew got wrapped up in blankets. Yeah, because it was 60 degrees in and that room. Nobody thought to change the temperature. I thought you were rigging it. The way I understood it is you kept changing it. I'd never touched it. Oh. Period. Ever. <laughs> so I don't know what you're talking Maybe about. Maybe he was joking, but he was like, well, Steve had that thing down to 60 degrees. So I thought every time somebody changed it, you went and changed it. No. I never touched anything. Let me tell you something. If you're in Springfield... Never buy the bottled water called nice water. <laughs> it is terrible. Man, it Tim Lyons nice. made the mistake of buying this bottled water, which yeah. was only one of two brands at the local CVS or whatever. It was awful. Awful. No bueno. It was terrible. The tap water from the hotel was pretty good. It was better than the nice water. Yeah. Because that was water that trickled through my butt crack after I pooped. Doesn't it was sound bad. appetizing. It was it was terrible. It was so bad I didn't even not Tim was trying to like justify it going like it's probably better cold. And then he was like, It's better cold. And I was like, it's still not good. Well, right. well I mean it's better cold. It's like, well yeah. Well, note taken. Yeah. And then we got up the next day, had breakfast at Gailey's again, and went home. Well, we took some butterfly photos. And we took butterfly photos. That you can see if you go to Scott Prime on Facebook. Or Chimera Cup. Oh, yeah. They're the, on Chimera, too. On yeah. Chimera Cup or on both down. We shared the link. So, so overall. Overall, it was a lot of fun. I like the format. Mm -hmm. We got to tweak things a little bit, I think. Um, and then. And we we'll need do, to run it not on Mother's Day weekend. I think that's huge. Yeah. Um, some people suggested not doing it in Springfield. We're going to at least do it one more time in Springfield. For, yeah, we're going to see how the attendance is. We're probably going to do it at least one more time in Springfield just because. Yeah, I get it's not the easiest place to get to, but uh, we really like the venue. They, they treat us really well. So. Yeah, maybe I'm too loyal to the venue, but they treated us well. There's really no reason to leave yeah. at this point. And, um, if we get good numbers we, next time and we get a feedback of most people want to move it to St. Louis or something, then maybe we're well, not St. Louis, so. Kansas, Kansas City. City. That that's what was mentioned for yeah. like a bigger hub and stuff. But yeah, we could do that. But feedback was really good. We ran everything on time. 
Um, yeah. Only thing we probably should have done different is if there's only six teams, just do three rounds. Yeah, I think that would have helped. But other than that... What if it changed anything? What do you mean? Who the winners would have been. Well, there was really no possible way to do it. The way the, the algorithm or whatever worked out, there was no way to for one team not to play each other. I mean... Well, no, no, no. I'm just saying I wonder if who oh, was like, leading after three ended up winning after four. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't positive, so... Well, I was... We were, yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. Okay. I think that team, Grindhouse, I think had the lead all day. Probably. At top table. It was pretty so. tough. Um, but, but yeah, no, good time. I'm glad the locals came out. Um, I, from what I understand, there was only a few locals that did not make it. Right. So that's good. I hope to see more Missouri guys maybe show up next time. I know Barrett couldn't make it or Kendall. Joe. Joe. Roberts. At, well. Yeah. Technically Missouri. Yeah, he should have been there. Okay, fine. Joe no Roberts. Kansas people came. You didn't get get your butt over here. Yeah. No, I'm joking. Just Although next year he'll have a kid, so. Yeah, he'll be busy. Mm-hmm. He'll get that baby fever again, and he'll be like, oh, this baby's so cute. I want another one. If you combine baby fever with jungle fever, you get a very bad song. You got baby fever. You got baby fever. Yeah, we know what one? jungle fever is about, right? It's about getting a disease in the jungle. Okay, well, we're just going to end this and go on to the next segment. What else could it possibly be? Like some sexual thing? Well, that's fine. All right. Okay. I'll look, I'll Google it. Okay. All right, we're going to go on to the next segment where we talk about the Spike Magazine Cup or whatever. Spike, what is it? The Spike Magazine. All that's right. it. Spike. No cup. I'm looking at it right now. It's called Spike, the Fantasy Football Journal. Okay, then fine. Is technically a journey. Well, we we'll get into that. All right, we'll be back. And now's the time where we get to talk about the Spike Journal. Yay, Spike Journal! Now, why is this thing not called Spike Magazine? Well, let's if, get to that. In the actual fluff of the magazine, and this is a very fluffy magazine, it mentions that this is a journal. So, like, it's part of it's taking part of the magazine and putting it into a journal. Oh, so okay. this is you're not right, the official right. Spike magazine. It's just a supplement. You're right. So did you read the whole thing? Oh, yeah. I did too. And overall impressions? Um, overall impressions. We'll go through it bit by I bit here I really a liked it, actually. Yeah, I was incredibly impressed. Um, there's some things like, since I played Blood Bowl since 89, I wish... The timetable was continued. It, I wish it was tw- yeah. twenty five eighteen instead of twenty four ninety three. Yeah, absolutely. Area era that bugs me. I wish they would have just kept some of the fluff and filled in the gaps. Um, but whatever. I mean, I realize. I mean, if you're relaunching something, you're relaunching it. So mm-hmm. I just have to accept that there's old school Blood Bowl in this, and then. It's a role-playing game, so you can do whatever you want. That's why I've always said our yeah. home league was a continuation. And I look at our store league as fits in the same times as this. So, yeah. you know, whatever. It's fine. But, yeah, I, I, mean, I agree with you. Um, overall, I wish it wasn't chaos. But I get that these are kind of like kind of an advertisement or what, what's going to be an advertisement for the new team. So let's, get a, let's start with that. This instead of a death zone. I like this so much better. I, I agree with you. Just if you decided to pick up a chaos team, you pick up the chaos journal, and you're good to go. I don't play Warhammer 40k, yeah, but I imagine this is like a small codex. Exactly. Here's some history, and it's here's a lot why cheaper. you might like this team. You know, the models are out. Read this and yeah. see if you like it. So, I really do like it. I wish it was ten dollars instead of it was twelve fifty everywhere I bought it. It's a minor gripe, but yeah. No, I, I'm this saying the price point of saying I, I drop ten dollar bill versus fifteen dollar bill makes sense. My, you have fifteen dollar bills. I might want to get those checked. A ten and a five. Oh, okay. I'm just saying there is a a difference. You know. No, I agree. Like you know, we all know that nine ninety nine doesn't sell more <laughs> things, but to some people it might. You know. Right. Um. 
So I liked a lot of the art that's in here. The art's um, really good. I like that, like, let's just go I page like that by the page. art is new, too, instead of just the same rehash of the old material. Amen. So you open the front cover, and immediately you have painted models with little names and, like, what team they're from. Now, they're all from the same team because they're trying to sell you on this Doom Lords set. Right. But I like that they made it fluffy with these names and stuff. This is, to me, a throwback of, like, some of those second edition books and stuff where... You had their house miniatures painted. And right. It would say, like, oh, so-and-so is about to go run a play here, mm -hmm. or this or that. Um, so I like that. I think that's really cool. It has an intro here at the beginning with a table of contents. And Jonathan Taylor York got his own mug on there. Johan T. Mad. Oh, is that him? Yeah, it's JTY. Oh. Well, okay. Lucky SOB. <laughs> well, I should have uh, guessed that. So I will gripe about that. Okay. Throughout here, unless I'm wrong, it doesn't tell you who wrote what articles. Yeah, uh, ex excepting the one with uh, by Purple Goo, right? Paulus von Gegster. Oh, I'm sorry. It wasn't. It wasn't yeah. Purple Goo. It was it's Gegster. Gegster. Yeah. Paul. Uh, Paul Geg. I just wish somewhere in here they they would have put credits and listed like four writers. Yeah. It. Really should. If it was one writer, give him some credit. And but it might just be part of that whole, well, this is uh, partly everybody, so we don't know who to give credit to. And it might be that way. Yeah. But I still wish I just would have saw credit. But someone had to put the words down, so they should at least get credit. To my knowledge, there's also no credits for the art either. Uh, I didn't see any. Okay. But we do have new art, so that's great. Um, I guess really... Did they even mention Nifton at the end? Yes, they did. Okay. We'll get to that. So it opens up with the Chosen of Chaos and goes through like oh, some right. fluff stuff. Yeah. Of what the team's made up of. It goes into some f famous Chaos Chosen teams. Again, the old school second edition guy to me doesn't like really. If I wanted to nitpick, I mm -hmm. don't like any of these team names. But yeah, not a big deal. The Skulls of Katam. The Chaos Thugs, the Ever Chosen, and the Claws of Chaos. To me, eh, not so original, but I didn't make them up. So maybe these are some, you know, house teams or something that they play test with or whatever. So they did, gave some good fluff for them. Did find out a uh, cheeky little uh, shout out, I guess. Okay. Let me get to Twitter to find it out exactly. Okay. Um, because. Uh, in the Ever Chosen, it mm -hmm. says, Their detractors claim that any success they enjoy is wholly due to the mystical artifact their patron possesses, the Eye of Shearer, which grants him the power to see future opposition plays. So, Chip Chipperson on Twitter mentioned that it was a cheeky little reference. I'm like, I, I don't get it, because, you know, we're American. Right. And he said, Alan Shearer was a prolific striker for Newcastle United, who was also known as a tune in the late 90s and early 2000s. And then Chris Shortall said uh, about the other half of the reference, the Eye of Shirian, I don't know where he's getting this, but I'm assuming it's from Warhammer. The Eye of Shirian, in your hero phase, roll a dice and note the result. Until your next hero phase, whenever an enemy scores a hit on Archaean and the result of the hit roll is the number you rolled, the Eye of Shirian has forewarned him of the attack, and you can make your opponent re-roll the dice. Hmm. So a lot of stuff I don't get, but it's interesting that they threw in well, that's little what, references. Even with all these teams, they all might be some reference to some sure. football or soccer squad that we don't just not aware of. So. Exactly. But I'm glad they wrote up some cool little fluffy backgrounds. They went through each positional of the team. They even went through the star player reference, which, um, if you don't know, if you haven't bought this, Lord Borak did the spoilers in there. Grashnak's still around, but uh, Lude Grip is back. Lude this Grip time, it's changed. As I say, he's 10,000 more, but he has dodge. That means he's pretty freaking awesome. It makes him so much better. He was he's really good before. harder to put on teams, though. Why is that? 
because there's several teams that he could play on for 150 you could get uh, oh, to me you could yeah. get the two re-rolls this and that and just slip him right in now at 160 mm-hmm. makes it hard uh max spleen ripper is in here which they made a really cool picture of him <laughs> he looks that picture i really like but he's just got like this dopey grin on his face well he's supposed to look menacing and he just looks like her, her, i'm gonna i'm gonna cut you open <laughs> Yeah, I kind of like that. Like, he's crazy. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, he is a loony. Bile Rot Vomit Flesh is in here. They brought him back. He looks really cool. Uh, Wither Grasp Double Drool is back. Also and, very cool. And they really made him even creepier than that second edition art. Yeah. The little horns and everything. And then there's what? Is it? Scylla Amphigrim? And I think I he's supposed to be like a Bloodthirster troll-ish type yeah. thing. Yeah. He's a guy that go. He's been in other ranges for Warhammer as well. He has. So it's interesting. He's jumped universes. Oh, okay. I did not know this. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, there's actual models out there that don't look like what this looks like, but kind of does. Okay. Uh, Gobbler Grimlich, which is a mutant toad, and is not a slon. Will never be a slon. Slon will never come back. Never mention it again. Yeah. Which, I don't, I mean, that guy does nothing for me, but whatever. He's interesting. He's expensive. Maybe that's why it's not interesting. Should me. we go through all these in a and bit? And then uh, Morgan Thorg, and then Guffle Pussmaw. And we got our first official look of Guffle, and he looks pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, you we... know what bugs me most about this reference chart? What's that? Loner isn't the first skill. Oh, I know. It... Loner should always be the first skill. It makes everything so much easier. And it's not even in the same place on any of them. Well, it's all alphabetical. Oh, is that Everything's what it is? alphabetical, which is fine, but put loner first. Oh, uh, okay. I didn't notice though. Okay, you're right. Should we go over? The... Uh, we let's go over the new guys because I mean, yeah. Lord Borak hasn't changed. Grashnak hasn't changed. Lewd Grip, like you said, got more expensive. Has yeah. dodge. Max Spleen Rippers, nothing's changed with him. Go ahead and do Balrot Vomit Flesh. Now, he's, I believe, the same as that six-figure pack that came out right before it re-released. Mm-hmm. So he's 180, 4529, with Loner, Dirty Player, Disturbing Presence, and Foul Appearance. Right. So he's just kind of a bigger, badder Chaos Warrior. Uh, Withergrass Double Drool is 170, six. Three three eight. So stats of a beastman, prehensile tail, tackle, tentacles, two heads, and wrestle. And of course, loner. And of course, loner. And he can play for chosen, the renegades, and Nurgle. Yeah, and Bile Rot can do chosen and Nurgle. I wonder why Bile Rot cannot play with the renegades. I don't know. Hmm. Um. What's his name? Skyla. Skyla Anfigrim, I think. He can play for Ch- Chaos Chosen Norse. And he's 250. He's 5519. Claws, Frenzy, Loner. Prehensile Tail, Thick Skull, Wild Animal. It's pretty uh, pretty badass. Yeah. He's super cheap. Um, 250 for 5 strength, 5 move, 9 armor. Yeah. With Frenzy and Claws. And Prince I'll Tail. It's going to be hard to get away yeah, from him. Very true. Let's see. We got Gobbler Grimlich, the next one. Chosen Renegades and Underworld Denizens. 230, 5429. He has Loner, Big Hand, Disturbing Presence, Leap, Monstrous Mouth, Regen, Tentacles, and Very Long Legs. So, Big Hand yeah, and Leap suggests that his agility is at least three. <laughs> you would think. No, he's but it's just two. It's two. He's pretty horrible. I guess my problem is I don't see how this guy ever gets played. Not for that cost. I mean, it would take a lot just to say, I'm going to take him. Yeah. I For that cost, I just don't see it. Like, he's kind of like B- Lord Borak. Like, you want to play with him, but you just can't justify it. Yeah. I mean, he could theoretically leap into a cage with the four strength, hit somebody, and then try to pick up the ball in tackle zones. Right. He has very long legs. So it's a 50 50, but with loner. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Um, don't I have to talk about more. Uh, no. Then you have Gussel. <laughs> Gussel. 
Guffle Pussmaw. Um, cast Chosen, Cast Renegades, Nurgle. Um, skills are Foul Appearance, Loner, Monstrous Mouth, and Nurgle's Rot. Which is kind of interesting. He has Nurgle Rot, but not, not Bile Rot, Vomit Flesh. So yeah. he can actually kill somebody and turn them into one of your players. That's the end of the game, yeah. Yeah. Um, he's 210, 5, 3, 4, 9. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the same as was in the original book. Right. So there's your runner if you have enough money to get him for mm -hmm. a Nurgle team. So uh, they went into... We got a little fashion segment. Yeah. Which I thought was interesting. It's interesting fluff. We had What's some... Talian? Talian's a city. So Talia. Talia. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense then. Yeah. And then we got Dirge from the Dugout, which this really surprised me. Because it's about Spike Magazine, like, I guess, dishing on the... You know, just the dirt from the dugout, I guess. You know, rumors. It's like TMZ. But it mentions Zara the Slayer. Isn't it odd? How? What? That Why? we get somebody that's just like Zara named Carla. Right. And it feels like they're trying to phase her out. Yeah, I thought for sure we would never see Zara. Like, it had to be, they were afraid of copyright infringement or someone, whatever. But they mentioned her. Right. It's very odd. Could it be that we get one in the future where she's like the sister to Carla Von Kill? Like for teams that, Car you know how Morgan Thorg and Ram Tut will they, not play on each other's teams. Right. They play on separate teams. So maybe Carla plays for all the evil teams and Zara will play for all the good teams. I don't think so, but. I don't either. Possible? It's, it's interesting. It's possible that she could get a total reboot where they come back out with a model and she has like stakes and stuff, but she's totally different. Yeah. Like not for strength and stuff like that. It's possible. So uh, then we have a uh, 2492 to 2493 Doom Lords squad breakdown. And it I really like that logo. You do, huh? Yeah. thought that was a really interesting take on it. Yeah, it has kind of like. A Chaos Warrior helmet and a Chaos symbol. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Goes in the background and gives us like a, what are those called? Teams of Legends? Mm -hmm. where, exactly. Except these, this team's way more expensive than those teams that we got in the previous books. Because I think those were at like, I thought they were at lower team value, but I, I haven't looked it up. I thought they might be on 1.8. I don't, I don't remember actually. But mm -hmm. they were all equal and this one is not. This one's 2.8. One one, yeah. It's weird that they would do lot. that. You think they would keep it the same so that you could have one, unless this is supposedly Doom Lords is just one of the teams in the playtesting group. Mm. So this is probably the actual roster that they used. Oh, that's possible. So that's fine. So and it doesn't technically say it's a team of legend. I don't think, but it has all the same stuff like all the other team of legends do. Just seems that weird that it'd be a different price. I like that we have a lot of the. Get this, folks! In this uh, team profile, not only did they name their team, they named a coach, and they named all their players. Yeah, name your players. That's just something big to me. And then it goes through their career highlights, and then we go on to an article with some star player spotlights on I've... Lord of Chaos. <laughs> Lord Borak, Agony Uncle? What the hell's an Agony Uncle? Um, He's an uncle that brings you agony. Yeah. I do like that these, the uh, age and the weight and height are actually better now. More accurate than yes. they were 30 he said years ago. Lord Borak, he is 5'3 and weighs 125 pounds. And he's killed 75,000 people. Yes. Um, I think it's interesting it has all five chaos symbols. What's that? On his necklace. Oh, he does. He's got all five. He does. He is. Well, there was five chaos gods. Now there's four. So he has the chaos. He has Nurgle, Zinch, Corn. But I think he just has the general the, yeah. chaos logo in the middle. Slanish, I guess. Yeah. But that could be an ode to the old, you know, fifth god Mahal. It's possible. Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal. Uh, yeah, these are pretty neat. A couple pages. You know, I'm pretty sure I made that joke last time. Yep. And I'm pretty sure I'll make that joke every time you say it. Okay. Just making sure. I, what I find funny is... 
Lord Borak is so hard to fit on any team. Yeah, he's horrible. And there's no way you really take him. So I don't know if like this is like an inside joke of like, let's make this big guy yeah. that you would never take a big star. Because, I mean, they talk about how he has all these endorsements mm-hmm. and this and that. It almost feels like he's just a like character an inside joke for fluff. I could see that. Uh, next player spotlight is the frog guy, Gobbler Grimlick. I, I did want to say I like these uh, chaos musicians that they did. Where's that at? Page before that. Oh. Right in the middle. The yeah. two figures. Oh, you like the artwork? Yeah. Well, I thought it was an interesting. It's showing more than just cheerleaders or coach. Oh, yeah, I you agree know. with you. There's a lot of great artwork in this Oh, yeah, thing. definitely. And like you said, it's all new. Uh, another Stars player spotlight with uh, Skyla. And it uh, goes through him. And then it goes into, which for whatever reason tells me that they want to really highlight those three. Aren't they the new ones? Well, Lord Borak. Well, not Lord not. Borak, but that, that that's what surprised but, me. But that's is a that we ask did... Lord Borak. That's not a spotlight, really, is it? No, it's this Star Player Spotlight. Yeah, so it is. Okay. It just I found it odd that it wasn't Withergrass Double Jewel with the other two. Listening because to the live new. thing, it mm-hmm. sounds like they're trying to get ten star players for each team. Okay. So they probably just brought those back to have new people. Sure. Uh, then they had an article here written, uh, Coaching the Chaos Chosen. I want to say that this is probably one of my favorite pages for how everything's laid out. Yes. Having the nice big logo, nice big minotaur, and then how the words are behind it. And Steve, that's what? a beast man. I meant beast man. Sorry. This is your problem when you coach chaos teams. This is, uh, might hey, be. you minotaur, get over there. Yeah. I'm a beast man. No, no I'm the f- minotaur now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you know what I mean. I am the minotaur of this team. Look at me. I am the minotaur. <laughs> I am the minotaur of this team. But yeah, just graphically, the layout on everything in this magazine is really nice. Right. I find sometimes, and I don't mean this any knock to the graphic designers of White Dwarf, sometimes their articles They're very are pedestrian. overwhelmingly busy. Yes. And like hard to read. Mm-hmm. They did not go quite that route on this one. No, and it's, definitely not. It's pretty nice. And the article is really good too. It talks about different roles that you can take for your players and how to level them up and what to take on singles and doubles. Now, if you get to page twenty-one, Steve, that's a minotaur. Oh, that's a minotaur. I get right, it. Right, right. I see the difference now. Um, He's squashing a football too. They have setups for kickoffs and defense. I thought that was nice, just for new people. That, I mean, a lot of times new people have no clue what to do. So yeah. even if you go by th- just this alone, that will help you. And it's nice to see the chaos pitch that we won't have a chance to get for a couple of months. I'm fine with that. We yeah. have enough pitches. Yeah, that's for sure. I never um, use any of them either. Then we go back to Star Player Spotlights, and we have Grashnak. I really like the look of Grashnak. Yeah. They, did really they now job. call him the Great Black Bull. I don't know why. But they he's do. great, and he's black, and he's a bull. It's true. He's not a beast man, Steve. This is true. <laughs> and then uh, we have like a page here on page 26 where they chat with a coach. Chat with a rat. Chat with a rat. And then we have lesser known chaos uh, star players. So then they And go we actually get a beast woman cheerleader. Yeah, she's really ugly, dude. Yeah, she looks like an old man, but it's also she's a goat, so... Well, what bothers me is she has this big tuft of hair going down to her treasure trail. Mm-hmm. That like really freaks me out. Yeah. Probably continues worse below. <laughs> it probably does. But yes, they they spotlight all the rest of the star players that they haven't talked about yet. And it's pretty neat that they give us a ton of all this information, you know, like former teams, stuff like that. I, I like that stuff. Yeah, definitely. Um... Then we go into some new rules. So new inducements, magical inducements, wizards and blood bowl. And this is interesting because now it sounds like each team's going to get, they might, but they're going to get their own type of wizard. So for a chaos sorcerer, who's 150, like a regular wizard, he can play for chosen renegades, chaos dwarf and Nurgle. He gets thunderbolt, and rampant mutation. So the thunderbolt has been changed. That's the lightning strike. Yeah. 
um, or what was the lightning strike, where it only missed on a one. Now it misses on a one or two. Right, that's a big difference. And you can turn somebody, or instead you could turn somebody into a mutant. I like that. You do. I think it's interesting. And what can you do? You can gain two mutations of your choice until the end of the drive. That's pretty big. Yeah, it actually kind of is. I mean, especially if you already have a guy that has like block or four agility or four. Uh, you give okay, him long legs. For example, legs. in our championship game that we played, yeah, you bought a wizard. We have the old school wizard in our mm-hmm. thing. You could have bought this instead. Yeah, and you could have picked a guy for right? one drive. It yeah. doesn't say a guy that can get mutations. It says pick a player from one of those teams. Right. So you could have went to your Chaos Renegades, and you could have gave that Dark Elf big hand or two heads or something mm-hmm. to make him a yeah. more efficient runner or something. Definitely. So it's very interesting. The Thunderbolt change is really big. Yeah, it is, because now being a 33% chance of failure, I don't know if I use it as much. Right. Um, it doesn't become just the automatic go-to. Then they have rules for any team for a hireling sports wizard. And this wizard can cast a fireball. Which is the same. Exactly the same. No thunderbolt or lightning bolt, but a zap. So you can turn somebody into a frog. I think it's awesome. They brought that back from the fluff. I also think it's awesome that it can only be uh, badly hurt if you hurt him. You can't zap somebody and kill him immediately oh man i don't know i'm kind of torn on this so the frog is five one four four dodge leap no hands stunty titchy very long legs he can hop in anywhere though <laughs> he really can yeah he's not going to carry any balls <laughs> he'd be such a tie-up piece like i couldn't break away from the frog <laughs> just kill him <laughs> good stuff but it's also uh it's harder to turn him into a frog the more strength they have so that's a nice way of doing it, too. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and explain that to everybody. So target any opposition player and roll a D6. If the score is equal to or higher than that player's strength, the player turns into a frog for the remainder of the drive. So if you try to turn a minotaur or a five strength, you know, muta- up, uh, not mutated, but skilled up warrior or something, it's you got to roll a five or a six. Okay. If you wanted to do it to Morg, you'd have to roll a six. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to do it to Halfling, you need a two or better. Yeah. Okay. So you can't screw over a Halfling team by getting rid of a tree easy. Mm. Or a Wood Elf okay. team or something. Okay, I was kind of trying to think of ways like, why does that matter? And then I'm like, oh. Well, okay. because at that point, like, if you've got, a, say, a Minotaur that starts out at 150, I think. A mm-hmm. couple skills. Maybe he got a good one, so now he's at 200. 150, you can zap him and get rid of him for the game. Well, that's it. Yeah, that's probably actually more powerful than just tackling somebody one time. Yeah. So, Because you turn him into a frog, you surround him, you kick him. Does the frog <laughs> lasts for the entire game or the drive? Just the drive. The drive. So if you hurt them, that's when you need to get them out. But yeah, if you hurt them, they're gone. Four armor. And somewhere in my mind, I have like couple of snotlings ganging up on a frog and being really proud yeah. that they heard them. Speaking of snotlings, they actually get mentioned in the book somewhere. I forget where. But they talk about a snotling announcer that got swallowed in one of the Did You Knows. Um, oh, Gobbler Grimlich once swallowed the snotling announcer Ibby Sticky Fingers halfway through the Chaos Cup final. And they kept announcing from his belly. Yeah. Yeah. But it's interesting that they mentioned snotling. That's the first time they've officially mentioned them. Oh, and then new. Because they're they're runts now in the team. Oh, you're right. Eh, maybe that won't stick. You never know. Um, so then we're on page 33 and we come to this era, area of Coffin Corner and Mighty Blow. And Mighty Blow is the tales of the sporting glory from the career of all-time star player Bob Bifford. And we go into this, and it's written by Nick Keim. So if you remember his name, he's the one who wrote the latest Blood Bowl comic. And we interviewed him on a previous podcast. I can't tell you which one because I don't pay attention. And it's drawn by Pete Nifton. Who will be interviewed on this podcast in the future, hopefully whenever we get around to do it. <laughs> yeah, we can. <laughs> he's uh, claimed that he'll do it several times. 
Well, we just got to get around. I know. Uh, but it's awesome. It is so this, cool. Admittedly, these like four pages or three pages would get me to buy this no matter what. And I think it's pretty neat that what they're doing is they're taking the team that this book is about, so each time, and then having Bob Bifford talk about the first time he played against them. Right. So that's a neat way of doing it. And you got some goblins with Doom Lord hats. Dude, it's classic. My favorite thing is the little guy with the nose overhang. Which panel? The top panel, second page. Uh huh. He's got his nose overhanging mm -hmm. at the bottom. My favorite thing. Just a little simple little thing. It's good stuff, man. Oh, I, I was curious because the first thing we see is a. Uh, says bob i wasn't always a commentator and then it says crunch now is that a reference to the game crunch or is that just an onomatopoeia i think that's not a well they are coming out with crunch aren't they a new crunch what well, was that blitz no, is it crunch that, yeah i think it's called blitz right i don't know i think you're looking to i think it's a sound effect it could be but i thought it was an interesting <clears throat> little reference if it's not so, I, like I said, I, I can't say it enough. And now I don't, know, I don't understand why they made all the lettering white. I even talked to Pete; he didn't understand why they made all the lettering white. Yeah, the word bubbles white while the artwork's in this textured, like style, stands out. And maybe that's what they were going for. I mean, you can't fault them for trying something different. Yeah, man, if you look back in some of this artwork, though, you can see like all these little details and stuff. Mm -hmm. Interesting thought. Um, also talking to Pete, and I don't think this is going to get him in trouble. He thought all this was going to be in color. Oh, so he drew it with the purpose of he thought color was going into. Makes it, sense. That's what he told me. That's a whole different style, then. Yeah. So um, anyway, I just I don't know. I thought it was really cool, and without giving it away, I, the the character that shows up at the very end smiling is kind mm -hmm. of the second edition. Well, not second edition. Both announcers. A little ode to both of them. So. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Pete put for Karen, which if you don't know that, uh, Pete's ex-wife, who he cared for no matter what. Um, yeah. She passed away last year from cancer, I believe it was. So, And it was around this time that he was oh, okay. having to draw this. So that's why he put that on there. Makes sense. He said he almost didn't get this in, yeah, because of all the Karen stuff that was going on. So he I'm said, "I'm glad he was, did." He said this was very hard. He said I had to actually finish it up outside their office, yeah, the day to turn it in. Well, I talked to him last week about it. So, anyways, really neat stuff. I can't wait. We know the next magazine is going to. Oh, well, the last, we'll, we'll last wait page, until the next segment for that. The the next page though. The very last page, once again, shows a bunch of models and then some custom models of some Doom Lord players. Yeah, I think it's really neat. And like I said, this this harks back from second edition where you had a rule book and then you had like two pages of like colored painted models yeah. that you got to see and stuff. We had and this in the, in the rule book too. Yeah. I'm just glad they're continuing with it. Yes, so, absolutely. Overall, really love the magazine. Great magazine. I really enjoyed all of it. I have a feeling that I'll keep going back and reading it and reading it and like looking at things and stuff. I wish there was a couple more did you knows. Yeah. I've already talked about how I wish the timeline would just continue of on. Of course. And I wish that we got some credit for the artists and stuff yeah. in there. But if you're going to make me give you a letter grade, I'm going to say this was A+. plus. It was way better yeah. than I expected it, it to be. absolutely was. I thought I would like it. I like this so much, and I'm scared I'm going to go back to it. I bought two copies. <laughs> <laughs> I just really did. I was like, what yeah. if I keep reading it and reading it and reading it and get like one wet or whatever? Sure. It's like, fine, I'll just buy two copies. Um, I, w if I could change anything, it's not really changing this. I just wish GW would have an electronic file that has all the rules. So when this comes out, they can just update those rules with the new star players, any new skills, any new, you know, who people can play for and all that. For every person like me and you and the few others out there, there's quite a few of them. Yeah. There is five to one of people who want all that stuff for free and think that they owe, they're owed to it. That's true. I agree with you. But I I'd, I'd, I would pay for a PDF that is constantly updated. And if I, I had to pay, you know. $10 a year? Yeah. 
I would too. No, no doubt. I agree with you. But it is what it is. Well, it it is what it is. So hopefully, since they did that Blood Bowl, what was it? Yearbook annual? What they call that uh, thing that came out? Had everything in it from that year. Yeah, Almanac. Almanac. There we go. Hopefully, they'll do an Almanac every year. Oh, like a hardcover yeah. Almanac. It'd be, be interesting great. if they did that. That still means we have to carry several books around. Yeah. So we either have to keep hoping it, that more product comes out or it dies. So somebody will put this all in one digital format <laughs> and we have it all in one place. So Yeah. We'll worry about it when it happens. Yeah. It's fine, though. I think Blood Bowl's really healthy right now. Yeah, it this is. This magazine's a good sign of that. It definitely is. Because I never thought we'd get this. No. And it being so well done and a lot of the details. I mean, you pick that up. You know how to paint them. You know how to mute, you know, get mutations. You know how to play them. You know how to level them up. You know the background of all the stars. You've got all the fluff for the team, the stars, the Well, let me tell everything. you the one thing it really does. Huh? It's made me super happy because I got to see new Pete Denton art. But I read it with no interest, uh, interest, but like I don't care about chaos. Right. Not the team I'd have picked to go out here first. Not at all. I read it and I go, man, I kind of want to play my chaos team again. <laughs> yeah. That's what it made me do. I can see that. Like starting the new league, we already talked about maybe starting over new teams. Maybe I want to play chaos. Yeah. You know, if you can do that by the inspiration of the fluff and background, I think you're doing your job well. That's what God's into playing the game. Right. So. It's very fluffy. This is, it's way more fluffy than it is, you know, how to, how to win Blood Bowl. Right. Know? And that's what I like. Yeah. The White Dwarf stuff seems to be very dry. This is what we played, and this so and so did this, and so and so. Right, eh, I don't really care. Top notch. So if JTY is the only guy who did this, thumbs up. Right. Um, but yeah, if it would be nice for them to say who did the art, even if it's like a studio, like four of our guys did all the art. Okay, yeah. give us four names. I'm just curious more than anything. Just give them a shout out. So, but top notch. Okay. Good job, guys. We will be back, and we will talk about some more. New releases of Blood Bowl. And we're back with some new releases that came out in addition to the Smite. The Smite. The Smite. The Spike. That's our own fantasy fanzine. <laughs> Smite. Football Journal. Both down Smite. I like this. That's not bad. We need 10 people who would like to write good articles. And, and ten artists who will draw for us. Yeah. And money. Lots of money. And some money. And me and Steve will be the editors and take credit for it. Yep. Sounds good. All right. Both down smite. So number one, coming soon. We got the magazine. We got three sets of dice. We had Chaos Chosen Dice with this like marbly red ish. Yeah. They were actually pretty cool. I didn't They're all pretty really cool. want them, but I, then I got them. Yeah. And then the Chaos Renegades, which were Black and green, mm -hmm. which I like that green because it pops so much. Yeah. Um, and then we got the glow in the dark underworld, or was it underworld denizens? Denizens. I don't get. I mean, glow in the dark is cool because you know, Andy was talking about doing a glow in the dark pitch at some point in the future, but it's kind of hard to play in the dark. Yeah, that's what so I, I don't. Like. I don't get it. I'm like, I get it, but I don't. I right. was more excited that they were purple. Yeah. And now they're glow in the dark. And so, like, it doesn't matter. But I'm thinking, like, what if the purple fades and they're just clear dice? I guess if you're playing and the lights go out, you can't cheat by changing the die. <laughs> There's that. It's a neat gimmick. Yeah. Uh, I really, I'm fine with them just being purple. Yeah. Be, it didn't cost anymore, you. so that's fine. Yeah. So those were all neat. Um, we also had a star player pack of like what 25 30 guys i'm not entirely that's sure been introduced it's not all the star players no it really should be but it's all the star players up to this point like in card format and you go ahead we'll talk about the other ones i'll get this one open so we can look at it okay so also we have a chaos chosen team pack and a Skaven team pack. Now, what the team packs, if you remember, are they have a couple of cards that could go to your random decks where you draw three cards. And right. It, both teams get a card to be crazy. It has some star player cards. It has some star players in there. Morgs in there once again. It has a um, 
a chaos spawn card because one of the cards can turn your players into a chaos spawn. Right. Then has it has a frog. Has the frog one. for the wizard. I like and that. It has all the positionals, which I think are great for new players. Absolutely. To look at. And then it has about half the deck is full of nothing but blank cards, which I think is a super waste of time. Still, it, if anybody uses those, let me know because I'll be interested. Yeah, I'd like they to know seem if you like pull a out 11 of those cards and you actually take a pen or pencil and you write on them over and over and over again. I'm pretty sure people have mentioned that, like last time we mentioned, you know, if you use them, let us know. Nobody's written in. Well, and I think we would remember that. I think some people will put sleeves on them and then use a grease pencil. Sure, I get that. But it, uh, why? Is that better no. than just having a roster sheet? Are we are we spoiled that we have cool-looking roster sheets that we change every time? Or I don't know. Because I like putting my own logo and title and yeah, color coordinate. I don't know. I think I don't it's know. a big waste, and here's the difference. Aren't these 25 each? Yes. It's 10 bucks wasted. You could take 10 bucks off of this, take those blank cards out, and I would buy every one of these. I don't want to buy these. I mean, when I see the other stuff, I want to buy them. Yeah. And then when I get to the big chunk of over half of it looking or half of it. Well, A, we don't use those cards. B, we don't use the random cards for the most part. Right. C, we don't need the star player cards for the most part. What's what's left? Nothing, really. There's nothing there that we're buying just to. Support the store. I support the store, and I collect stuff, so. Right. So these are a hard buy, and every time I want to see them, it's nice that we have updated art for the star players and stuff. Yeah. I'll, I'll give them that. Um, I'd probably buy every one of these if they didn't have the blank cards in it. Though. Yeah. So star player pack. Mm-hmm. We've got Barrack Farblast, Bo Gallant, Eldrill Sidewinder, which is listed as a CL4 dancer. Right. Glart Smash Rip, Griff Oberwald. Grim Iron Jaw, Guffle Pussmaw, Hackflem Scuttle Spike, Helmet Wolf, Horkon Heart Ripper, uh, which looks really cool. I do like that art a lot. Jordel Fresh Breeze, Carla Von Kill, Creek Rust Gouger, Mighty Zug. So Creek is in this other Skaven pack too. Mm-hmm. Um, Morgan Thorg, Madcap Migs, which specifically states Goblin and Squig. In case anyone is curious. Prince Moranian, High Elf. Also looks pretty cool. Ripper Bulgrot, Roxanne at Darknail. New art for that. Mm-hmm. Scrap a Sorehead. Still pissing me off that it's just a goblin with a sore on his head and no pogo stick. He's got a sore head. I get that. That is literally just telling someone this is his name. Oh, we forgot to tell him there's a pogo stick. You got the Swift Twins, Lucian and Valen, Vorog, Volt, Goldcheer, and Willow Rosebark. Mm. So with all these, you know what it tells me? There's more of those coming out. The next set is Dark Elves. Because we got two Dark Elves with new art. And you know what we found out recently? I thought we that's already been leaked. That the next set's Dark Elves. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. But that was just like released last week. These came out two weeks ago. So Oh, I get you. So we should have paid attention. Yeah. Looking at these, you could figure out that the next release is Dark Elves. Gotcha. And I bet it has some mention of High Elves, too, since Prince Moranian is in here. Gotcha, yeah. That's all the old new art. Hmm. But yes. So that's the new release for this time. There was next no pitch. Quarterly. The pitch was supposed to come out, but there was issues, so... It's supposed to come out in July now, which I guess is when the next ones come out. Okay. And so, then Warhammer World just happened, and they showed all the new stuff coming out. Which is cheerleaders through Forge World. So many cheerleaders, yes. But all through Forge World. Uh, as far as we understand, yes. What else through Forge World? I don't remember. We saw the, the human pack again. Neutral, maybe. I don't. There is a Joseph Bugman. Like yeah, two poses. Joseph Bugman, we knew about that. That oh, actually was released then. Are those like Warhammer World exclusives or something? Mm-hmm. For now. It'll be okay. a, it'll go to Forge World. I want those. Oh yeah. I want those two models really bad. So if somebody wants to get those two models for me. It's just one model, then, isn't it? No, there's two different ones from what I saw. This 
I thought it was one model and you could make them two different ways. No, it's probably right. It probably is two models. Never mind. Well. You're right. So whoever is going to pick those up for me and then make sure you get mine first and then pick up some from Steve. Yeah. And then ship them to us so we can pay you back. Just let us know if there's two models or one. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think those look really awesome and cool for like a dwarf coach or mm-hmm. something. Um, I thought there was some other things coming out. There uh, probably saw, are. There's we saw Dark Elves. Yeah, Dark Elves, the next, next team, team, next which, Spike Journal, next, next spike, everything. Right, and then they have Assassins. Yeah. That I think are Forge World only. Probably. I think the next box, like this last box, the Cha- Chaos Chosen, we didn't really mention them that much. We talked about the whole magazine. But people were happy that you bought a box, you got 12 players, and included all four Chaos Warriors. So you had a whole team. I don't think Dark Elves come that way. I don't know how they can. Yeah, with all the positionals. So you're I mean, probably going to have to buy two boxes. I'm assuming you buy, you get one Blitzer, one Witch Elf. Runner. A runner? I don't know. And then three linemen? I didn't look close enough to figure it out. Almost has to be two Blitzers, a Witch Elf, and three linemen. Then you just convert. No runner? You just convert it? I do not know. That's very interesting. Yeah. Because I doubt they just give you one blitzer because then people will be bad. I got to buy four box sets. Oh, yeah. You're right. About, I, guess I forgot I'm, about that. I'm sorry. I'm talking about sprues. So yeah. a sprue has to have one. Now, it might have one blitzer, one witch elf, three linemen, and a runner. Yeah. And then you would have to buy two boxes. That would make, mo- that would make the most sense. And then the assassins are extra. So... I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I like Dark Elves a lot. I do. But I have a team. I'm just like, yeah. I don't know what to do. I know. Of all the new ones, like, I really want, I don't know. I really want the new elf. Uh, yes, I have all these teams. But I would like to buy some elves to get made up because they look cool. And I might want to get some oh, Dark Elves. Some pro elves? Yeah. If I could get pro, the new Pro Elf style mm-hmm. painted by Nathan, who did my rainbow theme again, right? Just as good as a paint job, mm-hmm. which I know he's retired now. I would do that in a heartbeat. Yeah, because they look I really cool. I love my paint job. I hate my models. I love my paint job. <laughs> right. And thank God Jeffro sold or gave me two of those second edition blitzers to really make them feel better. Yeah. <laughs> but I love my paint job. And that's what makes that team to me. Yeah, I, I understand. So, huh? Um, I keep thinking we're missing like one other thing. They showed the pitch, which I thought was interesting. It looks like a boat. So that's that, for dark elves. Yeah. Okay. Fits perfectly for my theme. Yeah. The Black Phoenix Ravagers. Yeah, you already had the dark elf ship, pirate ship mm-hmm. theme going. So, and then the other side is it's being attacked by a kraken. So that's kind of neat. Huh. I might actually get that one then. That's different. Yeah. What if it has special rules or something? It would have to. I mean, sure it does. But you're kind of screwing one side if there's if they're bad. Well, that's true. So I don't know. So a lot of good maybe, things. Maybe they're implementing the uh, the pirate ship rules, or the ship rules. Oh, so you have to one. roll after every turn to see if you sway. Well, that'd be kind of That would be interesting. That would be. Huh. Kind of like that. If you're interested about that, you can go back to our pirate <laughs> episode of I Don't Know the Number Because I Don't Pay Attention. It was like two years ago about this time. Was it just two years ago? I think it was only really about two years ago. Just seemed a like a lot two longer. Years ago. Maybe it's three years ago. Okay. I think it was two. But um, We've been doing this podcast a long time. We really, really <laughs> have. There was nothing else, right? I'm sure there is. I'm sure we're forgetting it. You think at some point, since we saw sketches, we're going to see a Nurgle team? Yeah, I thought they would be... I didn't write stuff down because I thought they'd be having an official release, like through email or something, but nothing ever came, so I don't know. Hmm. Either way, I'll buy it all. I know you will. Maybe. No, you're going to buy it all. I got a new house. If everything goes well, I've got a new house, and if everything doesn't go well, I've got to save a lot of money. What new Steve's going to spend on money. Yeah, new Steve's got to pay attention to his money a lot more than current Steve. <laughs> current Steve is, oh, you want to blow 400 bucks here? Okay, no, bo- no problem. 
You want a new TV? Here you go. Want a new PlayStation 4? Okay, cool. So Let's you got fun. all that at the right time. You know, I did, but it sure would have been nice. <laughs> I, I really, I really thought you guys weren't going to be doing it this year. Well, I, didn't, I thought for sure it was at least I wasn't sure six months or a year. And I was like, okay, well, I should be safe and could save up. Oh, wait, I can't save up a lot of money? Okay, well. Yeah, we're getting a little off topic here, but yeah. Eh, that's how it works. So. All right. So and is that all for the new releases, I guess? I believe so. Do we want to talk about anything else about the I, current I, stuff? I don't know if I said it. The, the Star Player card pack, I really like. I bought that. Oops, sorry. The team packs, I did not I keep buy. hitting stuff. Oh, sorry. sorry. You're cool. making noise. No. It's doing a lot of noise. I mean. But yes, I'm, I'm with you. And I wished they'd do more Star Player packs simply so we can have art and cards for everything. Because I don't really want to go back and buy... I realize I have all of these decks already. Sure. I don't want to buy an extra deck to take those cards out of and put together into one master deck. Well, and card sleeve wise, if they'd come out with opaque card sleeves. Oh. Yeah, I, go ahead. I would be so happy. And I'm, it might even entice me to buy these team card packs yeah. with the thoughts of I could shuffle everything into one big deck and not know what I'm getting. One thing that does concern me about all these star player cards. What's that? It only lists the current teams they can play for. So, say next time comes out an Amazon team, and now Morgan, not Morg, but uh, Carla, Carla, or whoever, but they could play on an Amazon team now. So now my card that I have isn't accurate on the teams they can play for. Tell me that card back. So you're saying if I come in here and look at the tree lady willow willow it does say amazon halfling wood elves is that all she can play for though uh-huh oh so now they might have ch they might have changed some of these people that's possible where like they can't play with this or that um Bogalon. i mean there's a lot of these might be accurate steve okay well maybe i'm just wrong then and they might have changed a few people that we just haven't noticed yeah. Uh, Helmet Wolf says uh, Amazon's Lizard Man, Norse, okay. Vampire, Humans. Never which mind. Is I'm mistaken. I just shocking. Didn't, I didn't pay attention then. I thought we mentioned that in the past too, so we could be wrong. Or maybe, maybe the, the old, old cards, ones don't, and this one does. Yeah, maybe they finally started updating. Okay. Them that way. This is great, actually. Glad you brought it up. Yeah, Roxanne can do Amazon and Dark Elf. Okay. Hmm. So who could Carla play for then? Carla? Uh, let me get to her. Dun, 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 dun. Amazon, halfling, human, Norse. She cannot play for dwarves, dark elves, or um, so uh, Zara can play for dwarves and uh, what's it? high elves. Okay. Currently. So maybe Zara comes out and she can play for dwarves, dark elves, chaos dwarves, or something. I don't Who know. knows? Uh, now, I don't think... Uh, can Zara play for Norse? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I can't remember. I only use it for halflings, so... Right. Most people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I know I'm not real original. Do you want a halfling right? team that's actually good? Here you go. Yeah. Well, some people will take the, the extra tree, and I won't, so... No, the extra tree... Oh. He's really awesome, though. So I can't good. argue with you when you yeah. say I, I, you're taking him. Like, I, honestly, I, the best I did at Chaos Cup... I. I lost all, every game except one with halflings, yeah. but I was one away from casualty record. Yep. So yeah, that that was a pretty good team. Yeah, he's pretty badass. So. Anything uh, else for this then? Nope. I think we're wrap this up. Um, I really wish a lot of this product would not come out at Forge World because I'm oh, not gonna get man. it. There's that for sure. Not gonna do it. So no. And we are getting a Warhammer Citadel in Dallas, which is about three hours away from us. When is that? Not open? technically Dallas. It's Grapevine. When is that open? Next month, June 9th. That weekend, I think. That's the weekend we're going to be in Iowa. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it is possible that they might carry some of that stuff. And if they do, I'm more than happy to be pack mule for people. Pay in advance. I can pick it up. But that's a very big if. Sure. And hopefully... I've asked them repeatedly, like, are you going to carry Blood Bowl stuff, like T-shirts or, or the pins or whatever? We don't know yet. 
we we just put whatever they they replied like you know we'll just put out whatever they give us hmm. i'm like can you get blood bowl stuff please because yeah, we would good. like it yeah so if they have some type of working relationship with Warhammer World, then maybe th- we can get stuff shipped over for free. Hmm. Possible, unlikely. Like for this kickoff, you can order at Forge World and get stuff shipped to the location for free. Hmm. They said it's a one-time special thing, but maybe in the future that'll be an option. Hmm. Okay. Because I have no problem driving down there. Yeah, no, no joke. Might have to look into that. Okay. All just, right. Just to mention. We will be back with some shout outs. Well, if it's the last segment, then you know what that means. Shout outs! It means we're almost done with this. Yes. But yeah, also shout outs. Shout outs! You didn't have to do it twice. I'm not doing it twice. Okay. Don't do it. Shout either. Just don't do it again. It will be fine. No, just three. Okay. So first for shout outs. Right. For okay. shout outs. Um, shout out. We want to thank everyone for coming out to Chimera Cup. <laughs> I want to do that over and over, but I know I shouldn't. <laughs> I know. And it's really annoying, even for me to say it. I get it. Uh, everyone coming to, Chao- to Chimera Cup and for Chance and Drew for helping run it and Tim for helping. Yeah, it was really awesome. It Made me wish it was. Well, I think I was just like being off work too. <laughs> well, there is that. I wish we would have got to Springfield earlier so we could have jacked around all day Friday, like all day, if that makes sense. I guess. I mean, we, but you we know, got me. there like one. I know, but I we could have ran around all Thursday, and if Drew and them would have got in, we could have hung out and played games all day. But I like playing games yes, all day. So. I get that. I'm just different. Okay. So first off, we've got a question from Aaron Ackerton. Uh, he's using fluff as a basis for team building. Okay. And do you ever find yourself making choices for skills that would be bad? So for instance, in his league, he has two halflings, one nicknamed the Tenderizer and another named Gus Hustle. The Tenderizer got a strength boost after causing two casualties and MVP, and Gus got a move boost after being thrown twice into the end zone. So uh, his his TV is floating around 800, and he's pretty much going to lose his chef from here on out. But he refuses to cut them as they are the heart of the team. Have you done that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, you don't listen enough. Scott absolutely does that. Right. Um, so, one, I would always take... A strength up. Yeah, you're, you're very big on I any would, any skill up. Almost anything. Any stat up. Almost take. anything but movement. Or not movement. Anything armor. but armor. Yeah. I would take. Um, I had a Snotling with AG plus one. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe movement. I don't know. He was ridiculous. But I kept him. Yep. And with halflings, especially the stunty type teams, that's going to take care of themselves. Yeah, over time. But you can ask Steve... I played in the finals against Steve. I gave him, what, 210? Yeah, 230, in I think. Inducements. I had, a, I had a pro elf on my team with two move busts. I should have cut him. Steve doesn't get enough money to get the wizard, and we play, our, we play the game. Yeah. But I could not cut a player going into the finals. Because he's been with the team the whole time. Because he really had, he was, he was there the whole season. And I was like, nope, Mr. Knees already declared he's going to, or Mr. Broken Ankles, is going to retire at the end of the season. Mm -hmm. When our season ends or he dies before is when I'll cut him. Yeah. And so he got to play and play in the championship game. So, yes, a lot of times I let role playing get in the way of being efficient. And it sucks sometimes. <laughs> I think my worst example was playing my Ganunga Cap Giants, where I decided they were a chaos team. I decided every time they leveled up, I would roll to see what category they take from. Right. And then on top of that, we took our, our, random, our skills. random skills. Yeah. And they sucked. Because I was just, every time, using chaos to decide it. was it. either, what was it? It was either the basic skill or... Right, a basic, 
blood will skill, a strength skill, or a mutation, wasn't it? That's where oh, you yeah. randomized out of those yeah, three? Yeah, general strength mutation. I'm sorry, general yeah. strength mutation. Steve would roll a, a D3 and then oh like, God. oh, okay. I got another mutation. Mm-hmm. Great, I got very long legs. Yeah, that doesn't do me any good <laughs> unless I intercept. All right. That's, so really never. So it was very interesting. So yes, I do it quite often and I try... I even go to the point sometimes if I justify cutting a player, I'll buy an assistant coach. Or back in the day when you bought, I think now what they automatically go there or something. Isn't there some rule? Or was it at one point you could make a guy your assistant coach? I don't remember. I think I'm getting some old rule. But anyways, I cut a guy and then I would buy an assistant coach because I was being loyal to him by giving him a job. And it's stupid. Yeah. It's really stupid, and I rarely ever cut, cut cheerleaders either. Yeah. I just don't. So, yes, I let the role-playing a lot of times affect the game. Yeah. Good yeah. on you for taking the strength up and taking the move up. Because yeah. actually with the halfling, a move up is a it's lot huge. better than some of the skills. So. Oh, definitely. Uh, we also got a comment on Podbean, which I guess is a listening app. For a podcast, uh-huh. said we had 180 follower, 187 followers on there. Well, duh. We have the one eight seven in the house. We, we have <laughs> we have two listings of the podcast on there for some reason. One that hasn't been updated since twenty sixteen, and one that is current. I don't get it, but we don't know who the person is since it won't tell me for whatever reason. But it just says thanks for the reintro. Saves them going back to the beginning. Good idea. It's funny. Just was- go back to the beginning. I mean, we have uh, some good episodes back then. Those I know, but I was, I was thinking about this actually at work. It was like, maybe every, like, not two years, but maybe every four years we should do a re-intro. Yeah. I mean, it's it's never a bad idea. I don't really like when podcasts renumber, but I'm a big old school comic guy who likes yeah. high numbers and stuff. Like, but we get to 100, we could do a, you know. A re-re-intro. Yeah. <laughs> we can keep doing that. Re-re-re-intros. Right, yeah. right. I have no problem with that. Um, so, yeah, very very interesting that he mentioned this. Because I think it's kind of good every now and then for somebody to hear for the first time. Yeah. Because a lot of podcasts, I don't go all the way back and listen. Spe- I do for most. Especially but... if they're in the hundreds or something. Yeah. You know, I'll go back and pick and choose. But a lot of times I don't just start one. I got gotcha. you. Now, my new job, I don't get to listen to podcasts as much. Because I have so much downtime, I usually choose to go read. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking about... Starting to download the episodes and during those breaks, just go walk. That'd you know, be a good idea. I'm almost caught up on all my books. So um, once I'm caught up, I think I'm going to start listening to podcasts at work and just walk. Yeah. So. Be a lot of walking, but that's good. Yeah. Walk for 20 minutes between each round. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what's, what else you got for us? Uh, we got a, an email from Albert Machado because we talked with 3 Die Block last time about getting cheap teams for like five or six bucks. Mm-hmm. And he was curious what we were. Um, I know at wizards at one point, and I believe it was the new world that's over in Dell city had a whole bunch of the old D and D miniatures, yeah. the pre-painted ones where they were like 50 cents each or something. You can go on eBay and find those. And if you go on eBay, you can go on there. And it, it was so bad at one point, right when we first started playing blood bowl with our friends again, and I knew they weren't going to buy teams. I went through the checklist of all those miniatures. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this guy, this mummy does not have a weapon in his hand. So you can use him for mummies. And Mm -hmm. this guy, this ghoul has no weapon in his hand. You can use him for ghouls. And this orc doesn't have any weapons in his hands. You can use him for whatever. I I went through and made teams out of those for a while. Yeah. Because, you know, I looked and, you know, 50 cents a figure, you throw 11 of them together, six bucks. Yeah. That's. So you can, if you look on eBay for it, it's the pre-painted D and D minis, and if you don't care about if they have weapons in their hands, yeah, you definitely can find some of those. And I'm sure there's old game pieces from different games, or you know, like the Star Wars game or Mage Knight. Hero oh, yeah. clicks. Well, we played against it. I Hero played against the team horror clicks at the first Rock Cup, I believe. That was nothing but Mage Knight figures. Yeah. And they, they used the same model for this position. So, mm-hmm. like, you know, the werewolves were the same two models. And that's and the big like, thing. I mean, they don't have to actually look the same as long as they're similar. Right. And you can also just cut out pictures and put them on stands or something if you yeah. really want to go low tech. 
You could. You really could, and that those would work. And Bones figures. There's Reaper. Bones figures. Um, Finding discounted those metal ones teeny, in the shop. Those little teeny mate figures that are like of over here in America. They're of our sports teams oh, and yeah. stuff. They look like little halflings on the field. Sure. You can, if you didn't care who you bought, you could get a whole bunch of those really cheap. We had a guy in the league buy a whole bunch of Mario mushroom people. Right. And use them as halflings and big ones as trees. Right. So you can find them if you look around. But the cheapest thing, if you don't go bones, those bone figures, they're one, they're like two, three bucks each. You mm-hmm. can do those. But you can go find those D&D minis, old D&D minis from about 10 years ago, maybe. Probably, yeah. They're in the last 20 years. They're pre-painted. They were for, obviously, role-playing. Mm-hmm. Or they had some type of game built around it that you could do like a skirmish. Right. You can find those really cheap on eBay still. So good luck with that. And then last email we had was from John Peterson, seeing if we played Rumble Slam. We have not played Rumble Slam. Um, It looks good, but truthfully, I don't really want to buy another wrestling game because I play a lot of Super Show. Yeah. Um, And Super Show, you've got a character coming out. uh, Did you design it? or um, Which one? Which character? Jen. Oh, yeah. You didn't do one for yourself, did you? <laughs> no, I did not. Okay. okay. I, was, I just didn't know if we were going to talk. So, first off, Rumble Slam looks like a fantasy like pro wrestling game. It was through Kickstarter and stuff. Okay. I thought about backing it. From what I heard, and I could be inaccurate about this, is some of the things got changed from when it ended to when it finally came out. I keep hearing that it's a really fun game. Yeah. I just don't. At this point, my girlfriend loves Super Show. Like, maybe even more than me. And my kids are playing that. And it's just easier since we yeah. have so much of that stuff. Makes sense. And I don't really want to go paint a bunch of wrestling miniatures. I will play it if somebody has it. And you could sway me on it. I mean, I'm easily talked into any game. That's for sure. Um, Super Show, um, you know, you have a, just a 30-card deck. You can exchange. If you want to build your deck, you can take a number three card out and put a different number three card in. And all the cards are named off moves, clothesline. Yeah. You know, flying kick or whatever. Um, so, yes, I have Scott Prime character. If you wanted to go over to SG or srguniverse.com and look at their characters, you could actually buy Scott Prime character, and it's me, designed by me. And I've had, as goofy as it is, I've had people come up and want me to autograph it, which I'll gladly do, you know. It's I awesome. don't have an ego or anything. Of so, course not. To feed. Um, so Jennifer likes the game so much that this last Kickstarter, we did another creative character. And yes, did you see the picture? Yeah, of it? it was really cool. Um, I released the, the, the mock-up art and it's a, like 99%, 98% pretty much of what we wanted. We yeah. asked them to just tweak a few things. I released that to our super show play group here locally and she's really happy with it. But yeah, the costume I designed totally. JK yeah, Brawling. JK Brawling. Since her in, she's Jennifer K. Bowen. So JKB got the initials in there. She's a big fan of Harry uh, Potter. Harry Potter. So we're using the initials JK and then Brawling because mm-hmm. it sounds like JK Brawling. Kind of like AJ Styles or something. Oh, yeah. Okay. Or CM Punk. That makes you sense. know, as she comes out. So. She's the Mistress of Mayhem, J.K. Brawling, which is stands for Mom, Mistress mm-hmm. of Mayhem. That's cool. Um, and she came up with her own gimmick and stuff, and she told me some costume designs, so I drew those up, and we sent it in, and like I said, it was almost 100% accurate. Um, so it's really interesting to see that come out, and just nobody cares, probably, but over at Wizards Asylum, where we run Blood Bowl, we've had a... Uh, super show league now for we once a month we get together and do a tournament and whoever wins the tournament gets to face the champ and jennifer won the first tournament so she was the first champion and held the title for like three months and then i actually won a tournament i got to face the champ i beat her and i've held the title now for two months i'm going later today to see if i can hold it on to it for three months didn't you retain it last time by disqualification uh no i actually won oh, okay um we we've been playing at home just to play some matches with my character and stuff yeah. 
because in my mind, I like to like have house shows, <laughs> and it's stupid because it's role playing. Right. But yes, the first time I played her after I beat her, she I have a move that I can get disqualified if somebody blocks it. She blocked this move, and I was like, all right, I win my disqualification. <laughs> and her not being super into pro wrestling, she didn't understand why I got to keep the title. Right, like, you lost because you're disqualified, right. but you retained the title so because she, you can't lose it on she disqualification. She was so pissed about that. It was amazing. Now that <laughs> she's been watching wrestling, she gets it and stuff, but she still thinks it's dumb. Last pay-per-view, or last get-together that we had for Super Show, we introduced a new title called the Mid-South champion so we have like now a world champion and kind of the equivalent of an intercontinental champion right so we have two titles now to defend and it's not if you're familiar with zerk cast and they have their little xcw league they're probably more story driven because they just set up matches and mm-hmm. and try to make storylines and stuff we actually run a tournament like you would a magic tournament four rounds yeah and then we divvy up prizes and stuff so that's cool um the winner of the tournament gets to Pick a belt, basically, and then um, for the, our, our lower tier belt, the fellowship person, which will be at random, yeah, will get a chance at that one. So That's cool. You could finish last place, but for some reason, the commissioner comes out and gives you a title shot. So. Yeah. So that's how we're running that, and it's really fun. But, yes, we got to design another character, and hopefully I'll get rich one day and I can make my kids a character. That would be cool. But until then. so. Right. Well, it pretty much wraps things up. Uh, last thing do go to iTunes and give us a review. We really appreciate it. We will read your review on here. We're only two behind Slurpcast, so we'd really like to beat them. And really, we'd like to have the most out there. Yeah. So we only need like 43 people we're, we're, to we're, give us reviews so we can beat another Blood Bowl podcast. We're pretty far behind 3 Die Block, but that's because they started and they really pushed it at the beginning. It's I not, think, I think it's we not should that look big at... a deal anymore, but we want that title. Yeah. So and, if somebody, if, I think everybody gave him reviews when Polly was around. Well, of course. Pre Polly, I yeah. mean, everybody was like, I got to give this thing reviews. Now there's no Polly. And then, like, well, also cares? back then, you pretty much only got podcasts on iTunes. Well, now that's I, true. I don't even have iTunes. I can't leave feedback. Great. Uh, you could have been one of them. Well, I, I left feedback on ours. Oh, okay. That's I'm good. just saying. Uh, so, yeah, if, um, if we can somehow beat 3 Die Block, we'll have to give away something. Oh, that's if we can beat three dot block, we're giving away something. That's like something good. Yeah, we'll pick randomly from all uh, the people that actually gave us ones. Yeah, that would be really cool. So what that means it's gonna is going to take a while. But people we'll, who listen to us go give a go give some feedback. And if you already have, you'll still be entered. And then your wife has an account. Go put some feedback from her. If your kid has an account, go put some feedback for them. Sure, just do that. We'll over it out. Yeah. We have no problem with that. All we need is like eight people with six good friends, <laughs> and you can go in there. And <laughs> or six people with eight good friends. Yes, or one person with 42 40. good friends. <laughs> if, yeah, good that, luck with that. That'd be great. But yes, that would be very awesome, and as I said, we will read your... Well, I, I'll say the whole thing, but if it's bad, you know, we will not read it. What do you mean? Not negative. I'm just saying if like someone says, you know... F you, Jen, or... Oh, okay. You mean the Something people puts, that gets really cutesy by yeah. going, my, all, all my teams are both down approved. I'm Steve, and I like to eat blah, blah, blah. You I know. gotcha. Boogers. All right, folks. This wraps it up. Do you have any like predictions of anything coming out? Uh, Dark Elves. Dark Elves. Yeah. I think Dark Pretty Elves sure will come that. out next time, too. I would really like Amazons, but I doubt that comes for a while. No. It's got to be Nurgle soon, just because, Nurgle because the sketches. Because the sketches, yeah. That seems crazy that there wouldn't be. But but we've been saying that for a while, and it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, screw them. All right. We'll see. We'll see you at, for those who are going to 3 Dot Brawl, we'll see you then, and then we'll come back and do a podcast after, after that. Sounds good. Y'all have a good week, month, day, whatever, rest of your life. Y'all have some, fun now. Somebody, here? somebody could listen to this and then like die two days later or, or like minutes after and we'd be the last thing to listen to. You ever thought about that? No, but now I have and that's horrible. It's really horrible. Thanks. Yep. Hey, don't die. You can follow Both Down on Twitter at Both Down. You can follow Scott at Fat Finley and Steve at Kilowog2814. If you want to know if your team name is Both Down Approved, 
send a tweet to at BD approved. If you'd like to email them, the email address is both down at gmail.com. Or for more information, you can visit them at both down.com or at facebook.com forward slash both down. Hey, we're back. <laughs> a little excited there. It's been a while since you brought us back. <laughs> all right. You want me to start over? Sure. You're probably going to keep all this in anyway. I don't know. Yeah, because you're a jerk. I am that. <laughs>